Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Putty, and welcome back to another edition of The Dunes of Utapau. I am joined playing today by uh, Corey Wadsworth, the Conqueror of the North, uh, who is also who is playing, still playing Slash, uh, Marshall Peterson, who is still playing Kasaria, and we also have two spectators, Chris and Charles. Hello, uh, welcome to the to, to the show. It's gonna be a fun one. Hello. Hi. What north I specifically conquered, the world may never know. Any just that I've conquered it. Definitely Technically, there was a sandwich to the north of you that you just destroyed. It sounds like you conquered the northern part of Westeros, which is called the north. Yeah. yeah. It's also, ironically, the, the name for the northern part of Solist. No way. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. How's everyone doing? What is the north? Uh, I'm I'm doing excellently. Well, not really. Uh, no. It's it's not been a fun time, but I you know I I struggle on. I've you know my channel got suspended. I'm not sure why. And then oh, apparently it's because he got three copyright strikes. We don't know. No one's told me why. It could also be three community guideline strikes. It could also be... Well, oh, I looked at your channel, and that's literally what it says in big red letters. This, this channel has been taken down because of three copyright claims. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? Because I checked last night, and I was tired. God, what a monster. <laughs> anyway, so now we know why. Apparently, the man has brought their hammer upon me, uh, which... That is worse, because at first I thought it was a mistake. But if it is real, I don't think I'm getting the channel back. I don't know how you can even do that. But I will continue to struggle to at least have access to my channel, even if it's not public. Which I yeah, this is, this, is, this is what it literally says. This account has been terminated because we received multiple third-party claims of copyright infringement regarding material the user has posted. Yeah. Do you have local copies of your videos almost all of them yeah so that's good cool. um but uh, how are your cats the cats are all good they they were they were safely loaded and are now in another state oh yeah so that's good the news. cannon works yeah um and uh good news is i owe money to people oh wait that's just worse news uh also lucio ball is happening which has been the highlight of my week have you? Uh, Sorry if been... I bugged everyone out. <laughs> <laughs> he said you almost did something last okay. week. Not... I take pleasure in your pain. Sorry, what? You said, what, buddy? said you almost did something in that last yeah. year that you were hoping to do this I'm year. I'm hundred. I'm ninety points away from doing that thing, so I'm pretty pumped. What is it? From getting to master rank, it's, it's exciting. What about you, Toe? Are you getting to master rank in anything? No, I haven't I played any Lucio season. Ball. What, what rank were you last season in Lucio Ball? I was the same rank as you, bud. You were a diamond? Yeah. What a golden sheep you were. It was... I think I was diamond. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I, I remember getting to the same rank as you, but I might just be crazy in my brain. I like just... how you guys are like... You know, crazy high ranked, and then I'm sitting here. And well, no, we're crazy high ranked, ranked in games. Lucio Ball. Lucio I want to be clear. Lucio oh, okay. My goddamn bronze right now on the regular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, no, I remember you guys stopped playing with me after three ranked games. You were really bad. Wow. <laughs> I remember specifically, you were really bad. But hey, bud. If you want to play some Lucio Ball, we can play some Lucio Ball. Maybe not ranked Lucio Ball, but... Wow! <laughs> yeah. so, I'm to rub even though you're not Grandmaster Lucio Ball, you do have an essentially a buy to ESI August finals, though. Uh-huh. So, you know, how are you feeling about that? The, the ESI finals? <laughs> it's... Hey man, Charles Charles is betting against me. I don't know how I feel about that. Nah, you'll get it. There's no way you'll lose to Halflings over a three game series. No I way to Halflings. I would I would be very oh, I would be slightly embarrassed if I did. No, but the thing is the thing is Puddy's got 
more chance to throw his halflings at you. I think Putty's <laughs> best chance in the first game is to try to fuck up as many of your players as possible because he can replace his players like nothing. But I feel like your key positionals are much more hard to replace. Problem well, is, though, is if that happens, he starts like lowering his TV and then I get fucked. Yeah, that's fair. You also have to consider that uh, Putty's key positionals are also very important. It's just that he has less of them. And they're, <laughs> they're hard to they're beat. Really? They have, don't they have like 10 armor value? Hey, man, I, out, I outstrength one tree and knocked him down twice that one game. It's just unfortunate that he rolled really well and got up both times. They do have uh, 10 armor value, and one of them has infinite regeneration and comes back every game. God damn you, a deep root. Unless you absolutely kill the other team. The Wood Elves have been going to a, a retreat spa to relax before their fight. Ooh, very elfy. Yeah, uh, they are feeling very good to go. They're ready to die for the Republic, each and every one of them. Especially Echo, that boy. Oh, man. He is, uh, if he doesn't die in these final games, uh, he gets a hero's welcome on the return to Coruscant, for sure. Um, I just, I, I just want to say that uh, in the SI finals, Dark Bane is literally just fucking piggybacking off of MVPs. I'm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> my, that zombie has taken three of my MVPs. Oh uh, my god. Darth Sidious, though. Darth Sidious has fought for every single SPP point. He's, well, a, he's a man who works. Deep Root Strong Branch has gotten two MVPs for me. Bro, a dead man took one of my MVPs. <laughs> A dead man took one of mine too. Uh, dead man, in, tell no tales. In, 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 in game one, uh, I had one of my zombies die, and he took the MVP. That should not be a thing that can happen. Uh. <laughs> so, if you'd like to check out some ESI, it is available on my channel. Uh, but other than that, shall we get started today, gentlemen? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that's it then. Toe doesn't want to play. I said uh, yes. We'll see you guys next week. I said yes. I'm not writing a solo session with three people watching you. <laughs> Don't you mean no. three people watching you? Uh, well, this is going to be the largest audience we have. Get. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Oof. Toxic. Oof. 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 Okay. It's pretty much so accepted. I'm, I'm not used to people making fun of <laughs> this channel, because I always knew that if I did, he would just do the same to me, and it would just be a mutual strike. So we've always just accepted that we don't talk about that. <laughs> People who talk about it are monsters who have no heart. That? That? Likers. <laughs> right. So... We begin today's episode with the Right Honorable uh, Slash Voss and his Jedi companion, Kasari Lassiter, taking a uh, kind of turbo tram, turbo train, down to the surface of Sulist. There are windows. It's quite a nice upper-class train, although you haven't had to pay for it. Um, it seemed when you got into the checking that it was already paid for, that they uh, they just rushed, rushed you through, and, uh, and you got into a very nice kind of cabin. And it's going to be quite a, a long journey down to the, to the surface. Is this what it feels like to not be in a smoky hellhole? It feels good. I mean, when you look out the window, you do see the, the lower crust of the Solist surface, and you can see, kind of obscured by ash and smog, the lava... Not if I close my eyes! I... <laughs> I, there are curtains there, if you want to close them. I close the curtains. Let's not pay attention to what's ahead. Let's pay attention to what's right now. Slash, so we're in an elevator. I want to see into the city. <laughs> Uh, it's a kind of a train. Oh, it's a train. It's a train. You don't want to see the city. It is only what we faced previously. It is only nightmares. I think it's going to be a little more civilized. So many survival checks. No, there won't be. <laughs> I think we can just get a taxi if we get lost. All right. It's like I open the curtains. 
Uh, does it look like a big city? You don't see a city right now. You just see the lava and brimstone surface oh, of the planet yeah. below. Yeah, this place is a hellhole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, closes the curtains. <laughs> mm, you can smell the sulfur. No, I, uh... You can imagine smelling the sulfur. Maybe, maybe it flares in your nostrils a little as you look at the smog and ash that covers below. You should cut the window open and so you can smell the sulfur. I wonder if this train has any good food. Does it have, like, a room service feature? Well, as you say that, somebody with a trolley pops by your uh, your kind of cabin and well, says, Is there anything you would like? <laughs> Do you say that? <laughs> no. Uh... Coward. Uh, I, I, I woke up and I said... Uh, do you have anything that'd be like a nice munchy snack? Or uh, she reaches into one of the compartments and pulls out a packet of beef jerky. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, how much would this cost? It's part of the tra- the ticket. Oh, thank you so much. And I say, and do you have a drink like water or Sprite or something? I mean, lemon lime. <laughs> <laughs> do you have, have any good craving? old classic Coke Cola? Sponsor. She uh, she reaches into a, a seeming of a, a refrigeration uh, box and pulls out some sort of lemon lime drink and a and a cola. Oh, nice! <laughs> Let's go to town. I I say, um, do you have any meals like big meals, preferably fish meals? Yes, yeah, she says, uh, reaching into the uh, into a stack of papers and giving you one. Uh, dinner will be served in an hour. If you write down your order, and she hands you a small card with the space for it, um, we will collect in about half an hour. Thank you. Oh, I'll take one yeah. of those two then. I she also hands you a many. Okay. I, uh, when she leaves, I clink glasses with Sless, and I say, you know, I can't remember the last time the two of us just had a nice meal together. I don't think we've really ever had an... Oh, wait. No, we did. Back on the uh, the Mandalorian station. That was a good time. I cooked a good food. Yep, that was a good meal. Although there was a dead body in the room. So that was a little... I was also very drunk. <laughs> 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 well, we'll consider this a, an even more relaxing occasion. <laughs> And I, Did you guys uh, close the curtains? Did you leave them? Open? No, we. I, I left them open. I mean, I, I want to see what's going on outside. You do see in the distance a few kind of uh, domes of energy, green energies, like large shields protecting large complex buildings in the distance. Huh. I bet that keeps the lava away. So the the piece of paper she ended, does it have like a list of meals that we can have or are we just like supposed to pick something? She handed you a piece of paper and a menu. And a menu. Alright, what's on the menu? You do see a number of uh, fish meals. Uh, none of them local from Sulist. Some of them local from Sulon. Others from Antar and others from more obscure corners of the galaxy. If you meet a lot of it uh, bought from uh, Mandalorian hunters and, and things like that. And there are some vegetarian options, a number of different salads. You vegetarian. What's the, what's looking like the biggest fish they got? Uh, they they claim to have a piece of meat from a colo clawfish. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> bringing back good memories. I'll I'll write down that. Okay. <laughs> With a side of a side of French fries, of course. Yeah, indeed. Corellian fries. Yeah, Corellian fries. Wait, we weren't even gonna use alliteration. That's lazy. <laughs> Fine, you come up with the name then. Fra, fra. I give up. Anyway. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, is there is 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 there any? Um... We'll call them Freedom Fries. Uh, uh, call them Corellian chips. Oh, there you go. Great. Okay. That works. Yeah. Um, are, are there any, um, is there any Nar Shaddaa dumpster stew on the... They do, uh, they... Pulled they... from the <laughs> finest dumpsters of Nar Shaddaa. 
It's not a dumpster. Oh my god. Stew, they're making a stew. Oh, okay. I'll have some of that. After a little bit of time, uh, the the woman returns and, and begins collecting your orders. And at this point, the tram seems to go dark. And you can see out the window that you have gone underground. I say, I wonder if there's like a lake of fire b above us. I don't know. We can always ask. Let's drill a hole and find out. No, just kidding. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> yeah. That's the Jedi solution. Yep. Wait, isn't so, the Jedi solution to, like, you know, meditate and see if they can sense the lake of fire above? That's too much difficulty. <laughs> uh, I am it would gonna... only be daunting. I'm going to eat on my All right, I'm back. I'm going to eat my beef jerky. Uh, and um, say, well... I have someone that we're going to find when we get there, uh, but it could take a little bit. Is there anything you want to do in the city when we get there? Um, me? Uh, Sless thinks about it for a second and he says, I do have that bounty I need to look into. It could go a long way for paying for our uh, expenses. Expenses, you say? To get a ship, so we don't have to rely on Atlas. Ship, or... you say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I say, uh, I say. Oh, who's the bounty for? I have no idea. They'll tell me when I get on the planet. That's weird, but uh... Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> Trust me, I wish I knew. Seems like it's for dramatic purposes. What? No. Never. <laughs> no, actually, in all... Like, I'll say, like, in all seriousness, when you got the bounty, you were told about a bunch of different locations, right? They weren't going to go into all the details. You, you, know, you know, they they were like, if one of the boys wants to solace, you can learn more when you get there. Yeah. They Except weren't that... expecting you to do them all. Gotta catch a ball. I think a certain uh, <laughs> third-person omnipresent narrator was. I mean, you were heading to those planets anyway. Uh huh. So at this point, uh, around 15 minutes after the orders were collected, the, the train begins to slow down and eventually stop, and Atanoi uh, flares on. And uh, says, now stopping at Peringisi. Uh, let me check what I have. We need to, we need to stop at the capital. Um, so we're not going to stop here. A few <laughs> well-dressed individuals walk past your cabin and head for what looks to be the exit. All right. After about five minutes, the train begins to move again, and after another ten, your orders are delivered. Hey! This, this is good food. Well, is it, actually? I try some good food. Oh yeah, it's delicious. Fantastically cooked. Clearly have a very ex expert chef on board. Kasari, you're probably a little disappointed that it's so good, considering you were looking for food that reminded you of home. Yeah, I mean, I'm used to, like, personally... The meat is the most tenderized when it's almost rotting. Uh... <laughs> I look at Kasari. <laughs> I say, "What are you even on about? Are oh, you <laughs> just? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I I'm I'm fine. <laughs> are your taste buds shot or something? No." I just, you know, I... I, I will uh, say this, though. The food is better the more raw it is. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, raw I food... Enjoy, I then take another bite of the cooked fish. Uh, Kasari clearly uh, likes her food very well cooked. It's in marinating for years. In a dumpster. <laughs> Until it rot. <laughs> I mean, it's either going to be cooked by heat or by bacteria, does, but something's going to cook Does Narshatha even have dumpsters? Don't they just use the streets? Oh, Whoa. wow. <laughs> well, either, 
they did use the streets, we could just then take the trash off the streets, okay? You know? So, I'm not saying we haven't done that before to make our soup. Uh, I'm just saying that we do have a couple dumpsters. Jeez. Uh-huh. And dumpsters Those are... must be really wealthy neighborhoods. <laughs> Another are the bite of the fish. The dumpsters are the best place to get the food because it keeps it fresh. Ish. I mean, it keeps it out of the goddamn, you know, elements, at least. Which is How nice. are the Corellian fries? They're Corellian chips. Uh, they're cooked expertly. They are fried. They're not, like, uh, slowly cooked. They're definitely uh, fried for crispiness uh, and very, very salty. Oh. Do they have more salt? Do they give us, like, salt and pepper shakers? They did. I put more salt on it. Oof. Sorry, you noticed that this already very salty dish is getting more salt added to it. You wonder if I, you wonder if that's great for the you know of the heart of Trandoshans, although you're unsure as to what their kind of vascular system is like. Uh, I say, can I try one? After I'm done pouring like a good good chunk of salt on it, I give you a Corellia chip. I, I try it. What is it like, buddy? Uh, you would really like some more potato with that salt. <laughs> I, I immediately drink some of my lemon lime to wash that salt down and I say <laughs> Jesus there was never that much salt in the dumpsters I begin pouring a little bit more salt and I said it must not be salty enough <laughs> what the fuck okay this is getting creepy Slash's salt fetish becomes real <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not up on this whole thing um, I did take a bite and say perfection. I say, well, I say that when we get there, we uh, we should first check out the marketplace, see if you want to pick anything up. I have a couple things in mind, uh, or really just one thing in mind. Um, and uh, then we can talk to the local authority. Um, there's a woman there named Ginny. Um, she's apparently going to help us uh, with everything we need to get to the temple and transportation and, and housing and everything. So, um, sounds good? Um, sure. I don't know how comfortable I feel with staying in one of your voodoo temples, though. Uh, well, I suppose you could always stay wherever Ginny puts us in the city, and we don't have to sleep at the outpost. Although... Oh, I thought it was implied that we were staying at the outpost. <laughs> well, we probably will be eventually, but at first I think the message implies that we'll be staying in Run for at least a day. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll find out when we get there. Alright. I just don't know how I feel about your voodoo temples. Especially after the whole encounter on Naboo. Uh, well, you should know that the voodoo temples, as you call them, uh, are a very relaxing place to stay. I have trouble sleeping. Aren't they elsewhere. filled with weird voodoo magic? Not necessarily. Often they're just a quiet place to relax and meditate. Plus, why don't you make an average core world knowledge check? Okay. So you've been told by a few friends uh, who have spent a lot of time on, on Coruscant that they, that they often when they have visited the temple, the Jedi have mostly left them alone and it's been quite a quiet experience. Mostly boring, they said. Oh. I, uh, I, I, I guess I sigh and say, all right, all right. If we need to stay in your voodoo temples, we can stay in your voodoo temples. Okay. I'm not even sure if it's a very fancy temple. I mean, they've been calling it an outpost. So, it shouldn't be the normal temple experience. That sounds worse. Um, if, it's, if you take the temple out of Jedi Voodoo, then you're just left with Jedi Voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, he's, he's right, you know, that's math. That's, that's <laughs> flawless logic there. <laughs> You're losing the argument. That's what's happening. I'm so confused. It's okay. Let it happen. Okay. I, uh... 
I say, well, uh, actually, I don't say shit. I'm just going to look out the window. Has the scenery changed? Uh, yes, actually. You, um, you, you, the tram pops back over ground for a moment and seems to be heading directly towards a giant... It looks like a mountain, although the streams of lava running from the top indicate it is likely a volcano. Wow. It's huge. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. You ever seen anything like that, Slash? I don't know. Have I? I don't know how. how uh, I don't think you would have spent much time on planets like this. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Um, I certainly don't think I visited Solus. Uh, so I, I I look at it and I say, no, I've never really seen anything like that. I mostly stick to more habitable planets, but. Uh, it is certainly a sight. You notice as you begin to dip and seem to be going underneath the, the volcano. Oh. And you hear across the Tanai, we are now entering Mount Serrano. It is recommended to put the seatbelts on. Oh, shit. I put the seatbelts oh, on. Oh, dear. I look. I sit down. I, I think about it for a second, and I put on the seatbelt. <laughs> there is a, there's a little bit of turbulence as, as you're once again underground. You occasionally get glimpses of lava uh, depositories underground, and uh, eventually the train begins to slow and stop once more. And you hear of the Tonai, Welcome to Ceres Serrano. What's the capital city called? Villa run, but apparently nowadays they're calling it something else, like uh, Sarah's Serrano or something. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think it's it's called something like what's the name of the company that owns the place, buddy? I think it'd be fair to say you know that because you, you're Sal, seeing it off you. Right? Okay. Is it? Is that what's called? That's close enough that I'm not going to tell you. Well, fuck you. You were about to. God damn it. <laughs> anyway. Sarah Sub Central or something, I think. I sigh. I um unbuckle the seatbelt and I I ask I like is there like a thing to ask for like a waiter or something? Uh no, you do notice that you know the 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 they're all dead. The, <laughs> the cabins around you are pretty well populated though, and a few um kind of middle class looking. Solar stands begin to leave the train. I don't want to ask them where the fuck the capital is. Um, I want to ask someone who works here because then they're obligated to help me. The uh, train begins moving once more. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I begin to. It, it, there's multiple cabins. I'm assuming if this is a train or multiple uh, uh carriages. For, yeah, car. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I I moved to a different uh, carriage seat. You notice that a few people are looking at you strangely, as you are still within Mount Serrano, and they they seem to be worried for your safety. <laughs> if I go, I'm assuming actually the other thing, but if I transfer to a different carriage, I'm gonna have to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> I look and I say, "All right, uh, do any of you know where I can find someone who works at, on the train?" Uh, we're in the uh, the long part of the journey now, sir. I think they'll um, they'll just be in the crew quarters. God damn it! Uh, <laughs> all right, what are you guys are going to help me? Do you know what the <laughs> capital's called? They look at each other and say. Depends who you're asking. We got a lot of full of Subians on board. Well then, give me all the names you have. I don't care what. This is a hold up. Give me all your names. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, to the full of Subians, full of Sub is the capital, and for the Sur Subians, Sur Sub Central is the capital. Thank you. I leave. I I go back to our our. to our little cabin room. Uh, Why don't you make an well, easy athletics check to see how well you navigate that journey? Okay. Shouldn't it be astrogation. Uh. <laughs> hmm. 
Waggle's finger. Is this when the undead party <laughs> upgrades the check? I mean, <laughs> they have a lot of dark side. Apparently, I don't navigate it at all very well. Well, <laughs> well. Triumph. triumph, buddy. So, as you're about to get back into your cabin, uh, a big jolt uh, startles the ca- the cabin and uh, f- sends you flying into the air. Um, and you tumble and tumble, but eventually you manage to, like, set yourself, and you land perfectly in your seat. I just want to point out, though, real quick, that was three yellow die and, and one green, and, and I, I failed it. Dice gods are not kind sometimes. But I, I sit in my you seat one and strength. buckle myself Oh, I buckle myself up, and I say it's Surasu. That's where we're going. Yep. After not long, the train slows down and stops again and says, Welcome to Fulu Soup. Wait, oh, and- shit! They said that that was one of the alternative names, right? Fuck! I start panicking. <laughs> no. Some sh- some shady characters begin walking past the uh, your cabin on the way off the train. Whoa. I, I take a second look at those. I mean, Kasari has a natural interest in shady people. They seem to have old versions of the, the Constable Brigade uniforms you saw up on Umnoop, but they're old, outdated, and worn, um, and, all, and the badges have been torn off, and they're open to carrying not blaster look at pistols. The pseudo-mafia. They get very offended. I mean, Kasari K- stares at them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't you make an average stealth check? Gotta be bad boys. <laughs> It'll be fine. Shout, hey, I'm staring at you. Oh no. You seem to keep a relatively neutral expression as if not to be too inclined to be judging them or anything, but they eventually catch your eye. They're also a stan, and they say You got something to say, lady? I say, um your outfits. They uh rather interesting. Yeah, a lot of us used to be part of the force. Got kicked off, though. Kicked off? What for? Yeah, various things. Less than disguise, really. <laughs> Fulu soup's where you want to be. Uh, Fulu soup. Uh, what's in Fulu soup? Yeah, manufacturing plants. Lots of, uh... Places for people to be free, you know? Business, business. Oh, okay. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, well... I'm on to the uh, capital, but, uh, you know. <laughs> he spits. Oh, whoa, yeah. whoa. What a... Whoa. Good what a rotting institution that place is. I'm glad I'm out of there. Well, I'm only going there because I'm on my way to the Jedi outpost. <laughs> what a rotting what institution the they are. Hey, fuck you. Hey. <laughs> Let's give some high five. Hey, fuck <laughs> <you>. <laughs> he reciprocates. Too many rules for my liking. Anyway, I'm gonna miss my stuff. Have a good day, lady. Okay, see ya. Something tells me we should not tell them that you're Jedi. I mean, it seems they pretty They probably obvious. knew, yeah. Didn't seem the type to start shit. Like, they, uh... You know, if they wanted to start shit, they would've... They would've. Um, yeah, so I, uh... I say, well, I think we're probably getting closer. Um, they seem pissed, so that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. People are usually pissed the more closer they get to the thing they're pissed at. I mean, how did he you was know? More, more pissed about the fact that you called it the capital. I mean, it literally is. That has to be an objective fact. I mean, I think he, uh, no, he, he, a court. he spat because he didn't like the city. Not because he disagreed that it was called the capital. Let's talk to the past. Well, it was implied that the... when... there you go. I was going to say, um, well, when I was asking what the capital was called, it was pretty heavily implied that certain individuals, the Fulasubians, consider Fulasub the effective capital of the planet. 
Wait. Or at least not maybe the effective, but uh, basically the capital of the planet. Oh, but this isn't actually the capital, right? No. Okay, good. It was implied that the Surasub and Fulusub people belong to different f civilizations, essentially. And so they may have different capitals. If only they could get along. Anyway, I... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, I, I just get back in the car and, and finish my Get game. along and bond over... I finish my uh, Narshada dumpster soup. No Train one, the game's moving. <laughs> no one here is capable of doing that. If I have not found anyone from Narshada this entire campaign. And the Tanai blasts again. Now beginning the long journey to the central chamber. Seatbelts may be removed. Estimated arrival time, four hours. Oh, fuck that shit. And the train begins to speed up. Whoa, four hours. What is the central chamber? Is that like a geographical point? That sounds like Certainly it's nothing to do with gas or anything. Whoa. 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 That was passive-aggressive. Okay. Tranquilo. Jeez. Tranquilo, tranquilo. I, I unbuckle my seatbelt and say... So the only Spanish On to words I somewhere else. Like, <laughs> donde está el tigre? If, if, I'm, if I'm ever in, in a in a Spanish speaking country and things get intense, I'm just gonna keep screaming, "Thank you, thank you." <laughs> I'm then, sure that'll help the situation. I'm sure it will piss them off more. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Yeah, so... You just ask him, where is the tiger, over and over again. <laughs> Donde esta el tigre? I think, unless something crazy happens, I am going to simply meditate in the carriage. Okay, uh, it's, it's it gets quite loud as the kind of uh, the speed of the train picks up and you can hear the engines and, and a lot of the passengers begin long conversations. So it's a little bit distracting, but you can definitely find a moment of peace amongst them. For certain, do you uh, do anything, Slas? I guess I, seeing as though Kasar, he's just meditating. I think four-hour journey might as well take a nap. Okay, I'll say that you um, you recover zero wounds, but you get the plus one from your Trandoshan recovery. So I'll say you you, know, you get that one, um, and I'll say you can recover. Uh, how much strain do you have right now? One. You can recover that strain, um, and you'll get your stim packs back. So oh, you'd cool. use, I think you would use one that you had. So you'll get those back. Cool. What a great space cation this has been. Yep. Indeed. So after that four hours, you are both made aware by the kind of changing of the direction of the train that you are once again headed underground and you kind of emerge into a large underground chamber it seems to have at one point held a large amount of lava but almost miraculously it seems to have been drained out of it and in in, in around the chamber a bunch of support pillars have been risen this is a, a real work of engineering that you haven't seen before. They have kind of drained the magma chamber and turned it into kind of habitable land. A few large buildings kind of uh, dot around the chamber as the train kind of drives into the middle of the city. Hmm. Oh, wow. Wait, so the city is in the chamber? Yeah. I think Chris had this whole gas thing under wrap. A lot of fire in here. Wait a minute, Chris. I get it. That's wrong. You shouldn't make jokes like that. <laughs> now you get it. <laughs> you hear uh, across Chris the tannoy. Punches in the nose. <laughs> now arriving at Pirin City. Pirin? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's our stop either, Celeste. But it's a very pretty place. Two stereotypical Sulistans carrying mining picks me and walking past you. Are any of them hot? Oh yeah, they're really muscly. I I give I give them a fox whistle. Uh, well, they, one of them looks pretty uncomfortable. The other one waves at you. 
Does Kasari get one conflict for showing emotional attachment, no. giving in to our lust? I would not really call that emotional attachment, although I would <laughs> definitely call it lust. Although it's yeah. Anyway, let's let's um let's move on. <laughs> Train begins moving once more, and you move back into the caverns as you exit the chamber. And after a f another hour or so, you emerge into a second chamber, this one much larger and even greater work of engineering as me dozens of support pillars start to uh, dot oh, around, this <laughs> around this huge drained magma chamber. In this, in this area, you realize that the support pillars are not just uh, there to support the, the cavern, but in fact have been turned into large buildings of their own large skyscrapers um, and other skyscrapers next to the support pillars also dot around as this much larger city that covers almost the entirety of this much larger cavern begins to become known to you you see in the walls of this cavern that they aren't just uh continuous you start to see holes in those walls as if and windows so not just is the cavern filled but there seems to be buildings in the walls of the cavern also you begin to uh, slow down as you arrive in the north edge of this city. Hmm. I say. Now approaching yeah. Sursub Central. Hey! Hey! This is it, Sluss! Sluss. I like to imagine Sluss is just like whenever Kasari tries to wake him up before, try to wake him up previously, he kind of just opened his eyes and like nodded off and went back to sleep, but would she says, Sir Soup, that he kind of opens his eyes and he says, finally. I say, uh, yeah. so, you excited about getting to the big city? I... Not really. This seems like a... Pr probably worse than a hut world, now that I think about it. What? No. I mean, that, that would be... Bad. The only planet that I know worse so it, it, worse planet that I know so far is like Nalhata and Narshada. I will say, although the the settings are not ideal, and you could definitely judge some of the buildings, the actual size of this city seems comparable to Coronet City on Corellia. Hey, I mean Coronet City was mildly impressed. Hey man, I'm not judging the size; I'm judging the shittiness. <laughs> Hey, fuck you. This is the buildings look pretty advanced, too. It's an engineering marvel. I mean, Narshadaw's an engineering marvel, too. It's still a shithole. <laughs> wow. God damn, you're mean. You know, maybe one day you should goddamn live in a place where real people are instead of just judging them from afar. <laughs> I do live in a place where real people are. It's called Trandosha. <laughs> well, I never have judged it for being a shithole. It isn't, though. I haven't been there. Maybe it is. No, it's quite beautiful. Oh, yeah? How's the dumpster soup there? I bet you don't even have any. And I stamp out. I like, I like, I like, I like, like an angry teenager. I stomp out of the room towards the bathroom to go take a shit. <laughs> Are you going to the train station bathroom or the bathroom on the train? The bathroom on the train. Okay. Um, you do know that the train has... As you as you begin to walk off, the train does come to a stop, but you think you probably have time to go to the bus. <laughs> okay. It's less very confused that this situation does get off. It does not wait for Kasari. <laughs> okay. You uh, end up going through another checking procedure where everything goes fine, and you see uh, somebody waiting for you near a bunch of land speeders with... Uh, with a plaque on it that says Cedric and Merkava. I, uh, I also come out after, like, a minute. After having okay. taken a giant shit. Because, um, I mean, when's the last why? time any of us has gone to the bathroom? I, I point out someone's <laughs> waiting for our friends. Uh, I walk out and I say, oh, wait, I'm there. Okay, I say, um, huh, well, that's meant for us. Let's, uh. I approach. We're not Cedric or Merkava. Yeah. Ah, who must be Cedric and Merkava? Uh, he looks at <laughs> Sless when he says Cedric and looks at Kasari when he says Merkava. And he says, I was expecting you both to be men, but uh, I guess Merkava is quite a feminine name. Yes, uh, it's confusing, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but uh, I was also expecting uh, different 
But, uh, oh, never mind. Anyway, you said Nick Macava. I love how this guy is just like, none of us match up with what he's been told, but he just assumes we are anyway. He's like, it's probably because of your robes. Oh, okay. Uh, that'd be funny, though. Like, he's the worst. Plus, it's a word, robes. Sorry, it's, yeah. Ow. I, I say, um, yes, uh, lead the way. Oh, yes, very nice, yes. And he, uh, uh lead, he is a solo stun, by the way, very elderly by the looks of things, and he leads you to kind of a land speeder taxi, which begins driving across a very large highway through the center of town. I was told to take you to the Centroplex. Uh, Ginny will meet you there. She was going to meet you at the council building, but uh, that's been decommissioned. Uh, oh, what for? Uh, Surusub have completed their takeover of the city. They deemed the Sulistan Council no longer necessary. The board of directors will take care of the politics now. Uh, that sounds ominous. I mean, <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Well, uh, that's fine. Wherever Ginny is, take us there. I want to say that I turn towards Kasari and I mouth the word shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you make an average stealth check? Oh my okay. god, why? Because reasons. I'll upgrade that. Okay, the destiny work of it. So it's one red die, one purple. That's correct. And two boosts because I'm a stealthy little bastard. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you. But it's, okay. it's five advantage. That's gotta be something good. So he, you see his eye like peek up to the wind or at uh, the the. Oh uh, wait, the it's a th it's three boost die. <laughs> okay, roll another. Roll well, another. You just need a success. You just need a success, buddy. Nope. No. No. <laughs> he looks up to the mirror, uh, and you can see him looking at you through the mirror, and he says. Uh, what is that you said? I could not quite make it out. <laughs> he said, I look he towards really him and I say, it's a private it? conversation. You taxi drivers shouldn't be eavesdropping. Whoa, Jesus. Why do you always escalate things? I I say... Okay. <laughs> I roll intimidation. Can I roll an intimidation what? check? No. Can I no. Please don't. This guy's so nice. Yeah, let's just let Gasari react to this. You already made a check the scene. Let's chill a second. Okay. Okay. I say, uh, to sort of change, to sort of try to change the topic, I say, man, uh, the, uh, the city, it's really crazy that it's even able to exist with all the lava everywhere. Very interesting engineering. Yes, yes. Soro Sub specifically worked on the project. Uh, first of all, we had shields on the surface that kept us safe. Um, We've been living underground for a long time, but we couldn't build anything. We couldn't have cities like this. We were just have living in caverns, uh, like many still do in the surrounding city. But, uh, yes, yeah, Sorosub wanted something bigger, something for more space. So they first they tried the, the shields, and we still use that for our manufacturing plants on the surface. But this uh, magma draining technology, about two, 40 years now, has been building the most wonderful cities. Huh, wow. I, uh, I'm very impressed. It's, there's nothing like it elsewhere that I've seen in the galaxy. Hopefully they will be soon. Sorosub are hoping to sell the technology. Oh, okay. Interesting. Perhaps. I have a question. Perhaps. And perhaps you know it. Do you know how, you know, life lived on this planet before you colonized those two moons and started shipping food out here? Yes, we would uh, hunt the local creatures. It wasn't the most mm, various of a diet, but it kept us going. I do not think the new population could go back to that, however. What? Our immune system has developed. What did the local creatures eat? Us. Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> Perhaps they lived on the ash or the carbon. Interesting. They, I mean, out of character, they probably ate small creatures, which ate smaller creatures, and the smallest creatures probably ate bacteria, which fed off of the uh, vents uh, of lava. 
That would make sense, but Sluss is not a biologist. <laughs> Neither is Gasari. Gasari says, pretty colors! No, anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I say, uh, well, uh, uh, thank you, by the way, for picking us up uh, so quickly. Uh, no problem. Uh, I got forward word from Umnoob that Jedi were arriving, and, well, I, I only know of one set of Jedi planned to arrive. <laughs> um, how is, uh, how is, uh, what is, what is Ginny like? Is she nice? Yes, she was one of the most, uh, uh, she was one of the most accomplished administrators for the council before it was shut down. Uh, now she works in the uh, administrative department of Sorosup. She uh, t handles many of the communications with the outpost, at least before it went quiet. I gotcha. So she sort of acts as a li liaison between the Jedi and the, uh, and the rest of the country? rest of the planet yeah, yeah she does what she can although like i said the outpost has been quiet recently aside from when that revan did it go quiet hmm, around uh, a year ago has anyone gone to investigate yes master revan yeah but before him no he was the first when did he get here hmm, around a month and a half ago interesting well uh and you believe he's still there? Uh, I think the only way he could get off is likely through Sorosub. Um, but it is possible that the outpost has ships. Well, uh, have you seen the outpost before? Do you know what it's like? No, I, I, it is past Fulusub. It is quite far from here. I see. Uh, we passed Fulusub on the way here, on the train. Ah, it is an interesting city, although many people here fear it. I spoke to some gentlemen, and they seem to dislike this city. Well, they would. The uh, residents of Fulusub are the people who were fired from the company and couldn't make it off-world. I see. So... I was told that there was zero unemployment on this planet. I feel as though I was lied to. They don't count for Soviets. They're not people. Well, that's oh. the easiest way to get full unemployment. <laughs> Just designate people who don't have jobs as not people. Yep. I mean, you gotta start, like, with children, right? Because you don't expect them to be included in the figures. And then the slippery slope begins. That's the slippery slope. <laughs> From children. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I uh, Kasari doesn't have anything else to say unless unless something is asked of her. She remains quiet for the rest of the journey. The Slasher inquired does he try to mouse shithole again? No, he doesn't try to mouse the shithole. He kind of just sits back and, and uh, it guess enjoys the the pretty lava lakes. Yeah, there are a few lava uh, depositories like in the walls a little bit, but most like most of the cavern is dry and drained. Um, you do pass a large campus-looking set of buildings um, to your left on the highway, um, and then after that, you seem to be heading towards the central support pillar, which is clearly a large and bright building with many floors. After a little while, the speeder stops just outside and says, uh, Ginny will meet you in the courtyard. Feel free to explore the Centroplex while you're here. Uh, there are many things you can buy in the Centroplex that you can't buy anywhere else in the galaxy. And the discounts on the older products are fantastic. On the what? Older products. Oh, okay. Um, I will take you up on that. Um, I walk into the building. Yeah, I guess, guess I go with the uh, Kasari. Okay, one second. Oh shit. We're about to what? get a map. You want Are... that, I'm afraid. Sorry, uh, while point. we were walking out an hour out of like the little taxi cab, I asked Kasari, should we be meeting with this person, Jenny? Uh, aren't they she trying to get in contact with the bad voodoo people? She was trying to get in contact with them when they were still Jedi. She is expecting a Jedi. I believe she will understand. Also, I am in love with this already. 
<laughs> so, you walk into a very bright, open floor, and immediately a Sulistan in a red uniform comes walking towards both of you. Welcome! Shit. Welcome to the Centroplex! Uh, how can I help you today? I, I will be your guide, I will walk you through the floors and give you any information that you need. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, we're just here to meet uh, a, a woman named Jenny. He looks confused. Um, what do you have here? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Shall we start with the first floor? Oh, and he... gosh. <laughs> okay, buddy, I'm excited. Take me on the journey. <laughs> he waves his arm out to the show floor in front of you where a number of very advanced uh, aircraft, spaceships, uh, as well as a few land speeders and water speeders are put up on pedestals like a car show. Ooh. I sort of like... I nod to Celeste, to, you know, like, hey, look, look what they got here. I look at him and I say, yes. This is floor one uh, shopping list. Oh, shit. It is. These are, uh... These are just land vehicles, correct? No, those ones that are listed specifically are all spaceships. The land vehicles are down the bottom there. They're just various. The ones oh, whose so brand, the like, V series is all vehicles. This is all space. Yeah, the Solistan strikers are fighters. The scout is a patrol boat, and the shipper is a freighter. Mm. If you would like more information, the man in front of you is clearly willing to provide. I'm interested. Tell me more about the the V eight uh, Solistan strikers, especially the uh, the. Uh, more expensive one. Why is it more expensive? He uh, takes a moment and, and reaches into his pocket and says, the uh, V8 is the newest in the fighter line. They're fantastic. They handle beautifully, um, but more than handling, they're mainly meant for speed. The uh, TI is a much faster version. It handles a little worse, but you can't beat it for speed. As for the TI hyperspace, it comes equipped with a hyperdrive. Interesting. Is the V2 Solistan shipper any good, I ask? The V2 is an older model, but it has a ton of capacity and one of the strongest hulls in the galaxy, as all Solistan ships do. Excellent. Uh, what's the difference between the I2 and the I3 comlink? One second, madam. <laughs> nice. Uh... So, the I-2 is a very simple device, meant for, meant for extreme range communication. The I-3 is meant is able to communicate between planets and tap into very complicated networks. Wait, what? Really? Yes, it has a, a range. You can't contact everywhere with it, but it's very powerful. Well, what is the range, for example? Like... It depends on the uh, the space in between. There can be some interference occasionally, but uh, it has been known to be able to contact Corellia from here. Wow, that's impressive. I um, I look at uh, Kasara and I say, I think we should consider the uh, thinking about the the V eight Ti with the hyperdrive it could be useful. I would say. At that point, we might as well just get the Solistan shipper because it's cheaper and it has more space. Yes, but it's not designed for combat. Not uh, we're going to be blowing a certain. Um, you also notice, enemies of the Republic. You also <laughs> notice Celeste, that the uh, the VATI does have a very small cockpit. You don't think it's designed for more than one person? Oh, well, it does have an worry, astromech cause... slot, though. You can see. Don't worry, Kisari. I'll be sure to to come back for you. I'm sure sure Kisari can fit in the cock. I have a question. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. She's fifteen. She's fifteen, maybe sixteen. That, Hold on. Let's 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 move on. Delay there. <laughs> Um, you were like, I'm, sure I'm sorry. In the cock. <laughs> and you just like held out on it for a really long time. And you're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
so a slight look and say, um, do you perhaps have any more potentially combat ready ships that um, have more than one seat? Uh, two, actually, three would be ideal, but uh, two would minimum would be nice. He says, well, the Suistan Scout V4 has, and V5, V5 actually has the better combat capabilities. Um, the V4 is a two-seater ship, and the V5 is also a two-seater ship, but has heavy laser cannons mounted. I, I, uh, nudge Kisari say, eh? I say, what's the difference between the really expensive V3 and the normal V3 Solid Stand Shipper? The V3 uh, is the model originally designed uh, around six years ago, whereas the V3 32500 version is a newer model. It's got a updated hull design, it's much more sleek, and people tend to like the visuals a little better. And it's also gotten an upgrade in many departments. It has a little bit more weaponry, uh, a little bit more uh, speed, and the, the hull and systems are a, a little stronger. It also has more defense in the back, oh, if you cool. know what I mean. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I thought I knew what he meant until he said, if you know what I mean. And <laughs> now I think it's an innuendo. <laughs> no, it's designed for running away. It's perfect. The, hyper, the backup hype, both the backup and main hyperdrives are also faster than the, uh, the old version. Interesting. So, is this... The four, there are more floors with more ships that we can see. There are more floors, but the ships are on this floor, sir. Ah, sir. Sorry, I think we should consider. Would you like to see these... the the second floor? He asks. Uh, um. Yes, but I will take the uh, I three com link, please. Uh, he be, he taps it and says, uh, "Everything will be ready at the checkout at the end of your order." Um, can we, you know, when while we're scouting the other, looking at the other floors, can we, like, uh, maybe decide to purchase stuff from the previous floors if we decide yes, to? Yes, absolutely. All right. I, I turn to Kasari and I say, I think we should seriously consider one of these ships. The, these ships, uh, except for the fighter craft, um, the scouts have hyperdrive, right? Yes, they all do. I think they all do. Let me go check. I'm pretty sure they Oh, you also, said it's... the Soul Sand Striker ship in it. The Striker doesn't unless you get the hyperspace version. Yeah. Uh, yes, all of the patrol boats have uh, hyperdrives. And also, it would be worth mentioning that you can definitely surmise that if you were to get one of the freighters, you think you could probably fit the Soul Sand Striker in it. We don't have enough money for this. <laughs> we barely don't even really. I don't even think we have enough money for one of these. Yeah, we do. Okay. We have sixty six thousand in our bank account. Oh. Oh, actually, Slash, I forgot to mention on your trip down on the train, you noticed that your bank account was credited three thousand credits by a uh, Republic ID number. Only three thousand for winning an entire <laughs> planet, cheap Republic bastards. Hey, you can buy a lot of caramel with that. <laughs> I just thought of something cheap, you know, to make you feel better. Anyway, uh... You could <laughs> buy two M2 mobile terminals with that. That's true. What? No, I don't. I, I think I get what it is. Uh, yeah, let's move on to the next floor. All right, you move up a very fancy elevator onto uh, floor two. Um, which I will send you the shopping list for now as the sales representative goes through what you can purchase. You do notice as you go up a number of droids on pedestals like a car show. Now that I think about it, Mar uh, Marshall, how much money does Kasari have? I have 3,000. Just 3,000 credits? Yep. Th and 444. How do you have so little money? Have you paid for the common get, or did you get that that was going to be later? You told me later. Should I yeah, do it now? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, no, I'll do it later. Okay. I was just worried that you you had. I was worried I was, that you had. That's all. I was going to say, because I, I was thinking you had more money, like, 
we could get the Soul Stand Shipper and the B7 TI Soul Stand Striker. And, and we could, you know, have fighting capability, but. I mean, we do money for both of those. No, we don't. I thought you had a lot more money. No. I, no. I have. I have 15,000 credits on me on person. I have Just... a Jedi Padawan who has done, <laughs> done no quest the entire game for money. Nope. Literally. None. Uh, so... Didn't we Didn't we get paid for stuff, though? Whenever we did... She didn't. Whenever we did, either I wasn't paid, you guys ripped me off, or something. I occasionally got a little bit of money when we, like, killed people and, like, looted their corpses. <laughs> but, like, that was it. <laughs> Man, I, she's I not even like care, on the they're... Republic payroll or anything because, yeah. like, she's not a knight or anything. I'm a volunteer. Uh, oh, you, I'm not a knight, yeah. Um, it's it's one of those things that where Kasari, I don't think Kasari ever cared, like, it was never a problem because I, 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 I don't, I don't think Kasari cared. I, I, I know that Kasari doesn't care. I just like, I was surprised you're so poor. I don't even think I'm, Kasari does not think of herself as poor, she has more money no. than she's ever had in her life. I don't think I I know. But poor she gets by. She just can't. You know, she can put a deposit. She can. She could totally put a deposit on a spaceship. She just couldn't buy one. Yo, wait. Can we get a payment plan? Can I get like a hundred dollars down? You know. <laughs> you know that they offer those in Core Republic worlds, but it doesn't seem like these guys are going to, especially not the off worlders. Fuck these guys. Okay, droids. I say, show me your droids. <laughs> And they show you a bunch of droids and cybernetics. A political database? That's interesting. Hormone regulator? That's weird. Could help with teenagers, though. Um, social analyzer? Uh, Defense droid? You get a bunch of those. Fuck what's shit. the political database? It says, uh, it's mainly designed with core worlds in mind, but there are a number of uh, informative... Uh, entries on many of the key players in the Republic political sphere and a number of tips on it for approaching situations in the right way. Interesting. It's a neural augment. It goes in your brain. Sluss kind of thinks nervously about that and is like, okay. <laughs> um... The what about the SDK thirteen defense droid that's apparently only on special order? Ah oh, yes, let me show you. And he moves you over to a corner of the room that's a little darker and has a clearly all all the rest the rest of the droids are up on pedestals like pretty much unprotected, but this one has a glass kind of shield around it. And as you uh, get over there, you spot a familiar face also eyeing up the droid. It's uh, Claire from the ship. Hey, Claire. Ah, I'm glad to see you guys made it. It's been uh, quite a while, though. Uh, everything we okay went there? through the worst planetary experience. It's it's, it's okay. We we got here all right. It was bad, but the compass didn't work. Sorry, the compass didn't work. You can uh, really see the Zerka influences on this design, but I bet that hull is a lot stronger. Interesting. Did you say you... Zerka? And defense droid in the same sentence. I you can definitely that. see that the droid bears some similarity to those HK droids you fought on Malastare. I kill it. No, I'm just kidding. I, uh... I, I say, so why is this so special? It's the uh, top-of-the-line droid. Uh, uh, he lowers his voice and says, The designs are based on assassin droids, schematics from Circa, but we were hoping to get a less taboo use out of it. It certainly has security purposes. Huh. Wow. Why is it behind Very the glass case? born rich. Why is it behind the glass case? Ah, it's, uh, an, an, it's the newest model. It uh, has only just been completed. We want to make sure it's nice and safe. And also, it, it's very dangerous. It's it's That's why it's available only on special order. We need to run a lot of background checks and stuff like that because basically an assassination droid. Wow. <laughs> the guy is very honest. Like, we're basically war criminals. Don't tell anyone. No, just... <laughs> um... I, I look at the design of the... the 
uh, defense droid. How's it? Like, like, is it is it big? If it's an assassin droid, I imagine it's uh, at least fairly medium sized. Yeah, it's humanoid and uh, you know looks about maybe seven foot, maybe a little shorter. It's not ridiculously large or anything, and it's uh, carrying what is seems to be a very powerful rifle in its hand. You also notice popped out from little. Uh, hidden bays. Clearly, when it's in action, these are hidden, but they're popped out for display. Missile tubes in its arms. Um, small and can, can compact, but definitely packing some serious ordnance. Interesting. Wow. As uh, someone in the bounty hunting business himself, how effective do I think this guy would be as, like, a companion? Ooh. Well... I tell you what, this this thing would would you suspect you you haven't seen its programming or anything, so you're not sure how it thinks. But in terms of like weaponry, this could be your your definitely your match in terms of killing potential. Interesting. Um, do you perhaps have any um, footage of demonstration of its capabilities in combat? Huh. It's funny you mentioned that, he says, as he, uh, w like, walks behind the tube and grabs a data pad. And he shows you a demonstration of the missile tubing, and mm -hmm. uh, it's in a kind of a controlled lab environment. And it has, like, a slab of, of ore that you don't recognize. And he says, mm -hmm. that is the ore we use in our spaceships, sir. Um, and the Zerg, uh, not the Zerg droid, the uh, defense droid kind of points the missile tubes at it. And with about three impacts, that ore has been absolutely smashed to pieces amazing he what is essentially is... a walking tank sir that is effective thank you i'll um i'll keep that in mind um you <laughs> said there are background checks for this kind of thing uh, yes that's right sir we need to make sure you're not i don't know uh an assassin, or a bounty hunter, or a, a soldier, or anything like that. Why not? Well, I mean, we definitely don't want these to be used as assassination traits. Of course. If you want that, you could talk to Circa. I'm sure they'd be more than willing. Uh, I, I, I th say, alright, thank you. Also, I'll, I'll be right back. Someone's calling for me. Okay. Isaac. You know, Claire says, oh. you'd think they'd do more to camouflage the Zerka similarities. This one is not just similar. I mean, you can see with the red and, and the... It looks exactly like an HK droid. Really? I say? Mm-hmm. She nuts. It, it's... I mean, the color scheme is similar and everything. Is it online, I say? The Solistan man says, uh, no. At least, hopefully not. We, not that's not our intention for it to be online. That's for sure. I look at it. Does it look online? Why don't you make a hard mechanics check? Ooh, I think that means there's something to be discovered, or it could not be. I don't know. Fuck it. Mechanics. Boom! Oof. You see a dim light on its headpiece. And you sense when you look into its eye modules that it's looking back. Ah! That's creepy. I, I sort of wave at it. It does not react. Well, you sense it's observing you. I whisper to Claire. Is the is the dude away from us? Is he like away to so much? Is he away? He and Slash go and have a conversation. So he kind of. Oh, okay, great. Then I just say. I mean, I don't. I don't have to whisper it. Then I just sort of say in a low voice. I say, I think it's online, Claire. I'm back. She looks at you slightly worried. Uh oh. Well, glad this tube is in the way. Yeah, but if it can do what they said, I don't think this tube's gonna do shit if it wants to leave. Hmm, that's true. 
That's worrying. These things I really pack a punch. No, just kidding. Wait, what? <laughs> These things really pack a punch, she says. Was that supposed to be a pun? I was... No. She said it like she was setting up a pun. I don't know why. What? Anyway. <laughs> what, what's Kasari doing? Kasari has realized that the, that the um... <clears throat> the, the, the <clears throat> assassination droid is online. Oh. I mean... Just, just been out of character. I think this is this is basically an HK droid with a new name. Bro, she said it has red paint. This is HK forty seven. <laughs> oh, okay. But sorry. When I heard about the the wrist missile thing, I was like, this is definitely an HK droid. Like that's what uh, that's what she said, right? It has red paint. Yep, it has red paint. Yep. Okay. I um. I, I say, do you think we should just leave it, or? I mean, what else would you want to do with it? We can't afford that, she says, looking at the price tag. No, I mean, should we warn someone that it's on? We probably should. Or, I could sell it to Sir Soba's information. Whoa. <laughs> I say, what? I mean... I've I've hacked into many security systems and then sold them the information about how I did it. Security risks are worth a lot of money. This isn't like that though. I mean, it's not. You didn't hack anything. No, but I know something that they don't. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with that. I'm just gonna tell them. Oh. I uh, I walk over to the man. Ah, hello, is there anything... Would you like to purchase anything else? Um, well, I'm almost ready to go to the third floor. Wait, is there a third floor? There is a third floor. Okay. I'm almost ready to go to the third floor, but I just want to warn you that I am fairly certain that droid is online. I say, what? Chill out. <laughs> it has a red glow coming out of it. He looks at it a little bit and says, Oh, I'm no expert in these matters. I will, uh, I will go inform the engineers. And he walks over to a kind of a, a a computer terminal on the wall and begins speaking into it, giving you three some time alone. I say, well, uh, I suppose. Have you found anything interesting here, Claire? Uh, yes, I've bought a new mobile terminal and a new data pad. Nice, perfect for your profession. Yeah. Does it worry you that that droid was able to turn itself on? Maybe it was never off. Do you think that engineers would make that kind of mistake? Maybe... Maybe it's able to convince people that it is off already. I mean... Mm. Maybe That's a pretty like intelligent that. droid. No, I think she means that there's a low power mode that, to the untrained eye, looks like it's off. To be fair, Why would they make a low power mode? To convince people that it's off, if it was, I don't know, an assassin droid. Oh, yes, I <laughs> forgot it's that. Wait, what if it's here to assassinate someone? What if it's been waiting? Hmm. Do you think it's trying to get my target? I look at the droid and I... <laughs> I, <will. laughs> I say that money is mine. <laughs> the droid seems to be watching you, although it's... Wait, has its head swiveled? No, no, no. Oh. You can just... Because I assume Celeste looked at it when it did that, and its eyes, like, uh -huh. look back. But, Celeste, you can tell that its eyes are really fixed on Kasari. That's Kasari? Pretty... Yeah? I would not go near that barrier. I mean, I was already right next to it. If the thing wanted to kill me, it would have done it then. All of a sudden, it shoots me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's certainly trying to figure out how to kill you. I, well, who would want to kill me? Besides the obvious answers, Sless. Besides the obvious answers. Well, the Wait, obvious Sless. answers would be more than willing to get Circa to make a droid like that to kill Jedi. Sless, make a daunting perception check. Okay. As you look into the eyes of the droid, because you can tell there's something off about its gaze. It 
four purple for daunting. All right. Yes, because remember, and... formidable is five. Yep. yep. Uh, you know, I think that's why that messes me up. I have you... not succeeded on a single check in this entire <laughs> session, and it makes me very sad. You can't really tell what, what it's looking at. You think it's just Kasari. Hmm. Can I try? Sure. Okay. Why don't you make a daunting perception check? I think I have worse perception. Yeah, I have worse perception than you, so if I make this, it's going to be hilarious. You have more destiny than you have. That's true. I'm going to destiny. Gonna destiny. Curious. Fuck it. Let's juice it up. Juice it up. I'm glad good. you got to it before I did. No. Nope. <laughs> You're not even sure it's looking at you. You think it might be looking at Claire? I, I say, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it's hard to tell. Uh, who it's looking at. It's Although I definitely feel like Kasari, at least looking at you. I feel like Kasari was also pretty creeped out because she did think it was looking back at it, her earlier when yes, she did right up next to it. I say, well, uh, let's uh, let's go to the third floor then. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the people on staff it, can handle it. Hold on, it could be a valuable ally if we convince it to be our friend. I don't know if we need an assassin. I mean, it's might basically be an assassin droid, but he said it makes an excellent defense droid. I'm sure, it's also a really good. Show. We need all the help we can defending against the uh, the other two. Other two, Claire asks. Nah, uh, it's Jedi voodoo stuff. I hardly know, understand it myself. Mm. But uh, they're pretty nasty. Well, one of them is fairly nasty. I don't know about the other guy. He's, I kind of beat the shit out of him. They're both um, followers of the dark side. Well, one of them certainly is. Should I be worried they're going to attack us? Uh, um, only a little I bit. would be. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at you a little concerned and then shakes her head. Okay. Don't worry. If they attack us, they're going to be focused on me. You'll have plenty of time to run. Good. Just like I had plenty of time to run on Dawn Drafts and she begins walking away. Look, towards that was a special walk. case! <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Can... I forgot, what's her name again? Claire. I say Claire. Is there a way that you could potentially get the glass shield down? No, I'm afraid not, Slash. That's physical security. That's outside oh. of my purview. Yep. Alright. Well, is there a way that you could potentially... I don't know. Uh... Uh, never mind. I could disable I'm, the alarm on it so the place doesn't go crazy when you try to break the glass. That's I'm not going to break the glass. I'm pretty sure it's going to. And if we oh. help it, it might be willing to work with us in exchange. Claire looks at Kasari, concerned. I'm like, I don't know if we should be working with Zerka assassin droids. Uh, we can requisition it in the name of the Republic. I, you've she pulls always out a that. shiny new data pad and says, I can push a button and disable the alarm. This place has weak source security. What do the you want fuck, me to do Claire? It? Claire, you're so good at everything. Nah. I, I, I feel I think, like at this point, I Claire, to Claire. as far as an asset to the party, I would compare Claire to the Emperor for the Dark Side party. Because <laughs> like, like, the Emperor could always just like be like, boom, now uh, you're you're back, you know, or whatever. And Claire could just be like, boom, I've hacked the world, fuck you. <laughs> I, I turn and I say, Claire, I think you should do it and just, uh, we should see what happens. What? No, I don't think we should just see what happens. This thing might kill a lot of people. And? Claire clicks a button on the data pad and says, I'm gonna go to Sulon for the day. <laughs> if you need me, give me a ring. I think we should finish the tour. This thing might kill 
a lot of people. Claire walks down the stairs. <laughs> I think we should hurt. I think we should hurry with our tour, maybe buy a ship, and let's go, Kasari. Kasari is baffled at the utter disrespect for human life. Think about it like this. It's the humans who are keeping him trapped in a cage. And if Probably he is so because self... it kills things for a living. It... It seems pretty self-aware to me, staring at you, and it might be right piss you told him it was online. Okay, for one thing, plenty of dumpster rats have stared right in my goddamn soul eyes, okay? And I never thought that they were, like, you know, sentient. I'm on that bombshell. Let's take a five-minute break. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna go get something to drink then. I'm back. Anyone else here? Are you really though? I'm always here. <laughs> Anyone who's a real person here?
I'm back. Hey. Hey. What's happening to not real people talking to me for a few seconds like they're worthy of a conversation? Oh, ha, with ha, me. Ha, 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 ha. Well, I was just waiting. I'm so glad that we, we freed HK47. It's gonna be <gasps> good stuff. <laughs> 100% is not going to be good. I mean, I don't know if Marshall has forgotten a little nugget of information that I gave this character not too long ago. What was that nugget of information? Marshall? Hello, Marshall? Okay. Did you remember, like, it was either last episode or the episode before, when Claire said that there was a tracker in the lightsaber that communicated specifically to droids, and that the architecture was... Oh... <laughs> Oh. Oh! Let Marshall sit in, in ignorance, though, for now. Yo. That makes a lot of sense. I have returned. Welcome back. So, uh, you guys want to head up to the third floor? I is the guy. Did the guy come back to us yet? If you want him to, he can. It's a, what, like if you uh, want some uh, more time alone. Uh, yeah, I, I I want more time alone, and I kind of walk up, look as though I'm looking at the droid, and I I say, you know, if you're self-aware and planning to get out, you do. We'll, uh, we'll provide you a ship. And then I, I kind of turn around and say, All right, we're ready to uh, go to the next floor. Okay, uh, the third floor is the final floor of commerce. Above that, we have our museum, which is sadly out of commission today. And then we have the bureaucratic offices. Uh, follow me. All right. And here, is, as you get to the top floor, it seems to be like almost like an armory in the way it is laid out. Tables of guns and armor and general utilities. And uh, towards the edge, holding a crate, is a familiar face. You see Tommy walking across the shop floor towards a counter. Hey, Tommy! Ah, you too. Hello. How goes your travels? All right. We've been, uh, perusing the ships on the first floor for a little bit and admiring yes, the are excellent yes it's a shame that they don't have more seats indeed indeed the patrol boats are pretty nice two-person craft stuff mm -hmm. honestly though marshall we should consider buying the scout ships because we do have enough money to get the best scout ship. We'd have to leave Claire behind, but I don't know if Claire exactly wants to be following us through this on this journey. I don't know. I feel like if we're going to spend that much money, we should... How much money is the best scout ship? Let me have a look for you. It is... Uh, the best Celestan scout is 75,000 credits. I feel like if we're going to spend that much, we might as well just get the freighter. Yeah, but what combat potential do we have with the freighter? The freighter has guns, right, buddy? Uh, I said that you didn't quite have the closest of looks, but you can head back down to floor one after this. Oh, thing. shit. I thought we had 69,000 credits. We have 59,000. Well, then we have even less to play with, Sless. Is that including your personal funds or not? Oh, including my personal funds, we've got 73,000. And Kasari's will take you over 75 there. Oh, then we do have enough. <laughs> then we'd have to spend every goddamn <laughs> That is true. But oh, do you guys take a, a nice look ship. at the, what's on floor 3, by the way? Or talk to Tommy anymore? Or... Uh, well, yeah, I, I ask, what is a thermal cloak? 
Ah, it's uh, one of the, the 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 attendant who's with you in the red uniform says, "It's a um, it's a cloak that you put around yourself to deal with hot or cold temperatures." Huh, that sounds kind of cool. It's very useful if you're going to be visiting the surface. Is the outpost on the surface? The outpost, he asks. Uh, well, the Republic garrison to the north is on the surface. Uh, the scouts outpost to the south is underground. The Jedi outpost. Oh, the Fulusub outpost. That's, uh... Yes, that's on the surface. Do you think it'll be very hot there? Oh, it's boiling on the surface. Everywhere. Even at, even if you're going to the surface, I definitely recommend that surface gear and at least, uh, at least the full 14 respirator. Jesus Christ. Christ, just to walk around? Mm -hmm. And not for too long either. That'll only last you a little while. I definitely not recommend staying out there for too long if you only got that stuff. Why would they build a Jedi outpost where everyone needs to walk around with gas masks and shit? He shrugs his shoulders. I'm not sure what kind of technology they have there. Well, I'm. I'm a, they must have some sort of thing because otherwise everyone would die. I'm sure it's some kind of Jedi voodoo. Um, the wait, precision wait. wire rifle. <laughs> Yes, sir. It's uh, one of our top-of-the-line rifles. You see, us here at uh, Surusu, we don't design weapons in the same way that Blaztec and Zerka do. We don't make them for their construction. We usually take designs from the other companies, but what we add is intelligence. Smart chips that do things special. The Precision Y is one of our special range. One second, sir. I'll get you the brochure. Here we go. I'll give you the full details of the Surasub Arms Precision Wire Rifle. Hold on, let me pull up my sheet so I know how good it is compared to mine. Meanwhile, I guess uh, sorry, can continue talking about the... Uh... Here's the other the thing, Celeste. If we are trying to get HK-47, I feel like at that point we have to keep the Ebon Hawk. <laughs> you should head we over can't to, uh, you should head from over. Atlas. No, you should head over to Coruscant to meet a certain person who is involved in the Flames of War story. Oh god. I was gonna say we could keep, uh, oh no, no, not, no, 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 not him. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, no, I was just saying we could keep riding with Atlas. He's got pierced as well. Oh, he does have pierced, but read the special effect. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, man. And I can make... I can make that check even easier. I look... And I, I look at my blaster rifle. It has no I, heart points, and and if you have skills to add them, I'm not gonna let them be used on this because it's clearly a crafted weapon. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look up, and I look down on it. I look back up, and I'm just like. I, uh, I I look at it and I pick it up and I say, uh, you know, I kind of pick it up and I kind of wait, like hold it in my hands to see the feel of it, the rifle, and then mm. I and I say, I think I'm going to purchase this. Mm, an excellent choice, sir. The top of the line rifle, the most expensive weapon we sell. Thank you. Um, it does seem like a fairly good rifle. We definitely um, can't get the ship you wanted now. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to accept like the the freighter for fifty thousand. Well, I'm saying we should. I'm I'm serious. We should consider just riding with Atlas. It's free. Yes, but Atlas is going to be taking us to wherever he needs to go next. So it's one planet. Do you not. You do realize that. If we rely on Atlas, that he's going to probably get us tangled up in his business. I see. 
see no reason why he would do that. He has not done it on this journey. Well, Tommy is right there in front of you if you would like to you oh, know, yeah. converse with him directly. I walk over and I say, hey, Tommy. Hey. Uh, where, where are you headed after this planet? My next stop will be Coruscant. Oh. Huh. That's kind of out there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we have enough money to get our own ship. All right, we don't need to ride along with him and you know rely on Tommy here. So let's make a easy vigilance check. Okay. Oh god. We boost because whoever is try trying uh, whatever's you're trying to find here, someone is trying to make it easier for you. Oh no. Someone, the gods. You'll find out. Is Putty well, you might. It easier? Is Putty trying to give me my one successful check? <laughs> Putty's hey! hey! So, Celeste, as Kasari goes over to talk to Tommy and you admire your new rifle, you see a Sulistan in the corner shadily gesturing you over. I, uh, I put down the rifle. That's super shady. And, uh, I kind of you know, casually waltz over in the direction. You so, both head behind, like, a, a pillar as if the, you know, to make sure nobody else can see you. And he says, so you are a uh, connoisseur of weapons. Indeed I am. Looks around and says, you know, that gun is nice, but Solo Soup doesn't sell the good stuff at the public counters. Uh oh That's not even the good stuff. If that's not the good stuff, then I'm interested in seeing what it is. They only sell weapons with clean blaster beams. If you want real power, you're looking for dirty beams. Ew. <laughs> that's... That is true, though. <laughs> we should probably not use the term dirty beam. <laughs> dirty beam sounds like a porno about construction workers. <laughs> <laughs> he says, the designs that Sirisu come up with with disruptor technology, they don't sell. But Fulusu gets their hands on them. Mm. Trying to draw away some business? Yeah. Fulusu entire business is what Sirisu won't sell. In the rural side of town, there's a guy called Gizmo. If we want to talk more about dirty beams, he's there. <laughs> All right, but I thought we agreed. We basically—I thought we—I hoped we'd agreed that we were going to use the term "dirty beam." <laughs> he begins walking away. <laughs> uh, I go back and I look at the rifle, and I'm like. A little bit more hesitant, but at the same time, oh shit! I accidentally closed out a cool chrome, but I'll, I'll pull back up in a second. But uh, I, I, I look and say, uh, uh, "We have how many floors left?" The uh, attendant says zero. Uh, the floor above this is the museum, which is out of commission, and above that we just have our offices. I say, "Where's the courtyard?" Uh, it's just out front. Well, um, I'm pretty sure uh, I might come back for that equipment, but I think I need to talk to my to an associate to figure out if I'm really, you know, to figure out what the conditions are going to be at the outpost first. But I are you interested in any of our medical equipment? He says, pointing to the culto stims and relaxo stims. Uh, let me look at my stim packs right now. Um, I might need more. Oh, and he holds a stun grenade. These are always useful Whoa. to have. <laughs> uh, let's see here. You know what? Uh, I will take... Perhaps you're in need of a new Silas dress. He points to the standard clothing line in the corner. <laughs> or something for the more fancy occasions. He points to the high range clothing line guy. in the corner. By the way, Marshall, are we getting a ship or what? I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. 
I, I, I look and I say, I, I think about the offer that I got from the Shady Dude, but honestly, I don't need more power when the beam focus just works so well with my character skills. Are you skills. Sure you dirty beams? <laughs> yeah, that's a clean beam, dude. You know, I dirty know. Beam. I know. I don't. I don't want to make. You know what, uh, dirty honestly, beams? like I... it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> I uh, I per I say all right. So <laughs> what ship are we getting? I think the V two freighter. The man brings over a nice purple and another like like light blue dress. Sorry, it says, "Look how fantastic <laughs> these are." Hey. <laughs> I walk over to a man and say, "All right." So I may I'm get thinking... commission on clothing. <laughs> I'm thinking we're going to purchase this uh, precision Y rifle. He taps and, a, a little button on the side of it. It will be and, ready for you downstairs. So. And we'll also get the V2 freighter. Uh, very well. We'll have to head down and. Uh... And register it. Is there anything else you want on this floor? He says, gesturing to the clothing line. Uh, uh, what are the stats on the stun grenade, buddy? All right, it is in. The, it's it's just the one from the book, but I've got them on hand. If you don't want to go look. Uh, yeah. Could you post it? We're going to need yeah. these surface gear, correct, to go to the Jedi outpost. We don't. I'm gonna ask her, and then if she says yes, then we'll come back in. I think there's a chance she might have service gear for us. I posted the stun grenade stats. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, there they are. Uh, blast eight, damage eight. It is pretty good, and it would be good to have some stun grenades for pacifying troublesome people without having to kill them. Um, what skill is it? Oh, it's ranged light. Um, okay. I will take two stun grenades. As well, I say. He taps a button on the side of them twice and says they will be ready with your order. Uh, and that'll be all, I think. Not even this wonderful dress! Um, Jedi don't often have opportunities to wear dresses. I think it would be a waste. But if you're having your own Sulis, you should fit in. Uh, I don't think so. I'm sorry. <laughs> What about you, sir? I have a fantastic tuxedo line. Oh, please buy one, Slash. <laughs> I say, all right, I'll look at the tuxedos. Okay. Uh, they're very, blonde. They're incredibly nice. Uh, I'm going to just check you the stats on both of the clothing lines. Uh, so, obviously, the icons don't come through when I placed from worth, but it's remove setback and add boost. So, oh, with the the standard clothing line, you remove setback from social checks with social stands. And the high-end clothing line, you add boost to social checks with social stands. Um, I'll buy the, the high-end for 500. He picks out a, a very nice fitted tuxedo for you, and you spend a few minutes getting it nice and, and fitted to your, to your person. It has some... Uh, mm -hmm interesting markings on it and then it's it's a crimson color it seems to be a, like okay. a Celeste native style hey Celeste uh, adjusts his uh his bow tie i'm sure he has with his big claws <laughs> <laughs> and uh, says i haven't worn a tuxedo in so long since the war you don't tend to to need it for uh jobs but uh I don't know. Getting back into it. I say, uh, this is a fine suit. Yes, I'll definitely purchase it. If you uh, purchase the suit, sir, it uh, gives you a slight discount on the political arguments downstairs. That's how much of a discount? 10%. I don't even think I can afford it now, now that I have purchased the suit. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> 
<laughs> or not now that I purchased the suit, now that I purchased the gun. That's the ironic. Ten. It's like you buy the suit <laughs> to get the discount, but you don't have enough money to buy the thing you wanted. <laughs> oh, let me see how much a 10% dis discount would get me. Also, I will paste the stats of the political arguments so you have a better idea of what you'd be buying. I, uh, I say, um, that sounds great, but I don't have the money for that. Fair enough, uh, sir. It's so good, though. I say, oh. I say, I know Darth Vance will love this shit when he gets here. <laughs> Uh, the attendant looks worried at you and says, You say, uh, Darth, madam? No. <laughs> you must be mistaken. Yes, we I don't music. know if we need to tell them about the whole weird Jedi voodoo, the Sith Lord, stuff like that. Do you say this out loud? Yes. <laughs> 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 he looks at you both a little strangely and says, and then taps his leg and says, I'll wait for you on the bottom floor with your ship. Uh, which one would you like me to prepare for you? Hum? The V2 freighter. The V2. V2, uh, the oh. Sulstan shipper. Yep. Yes, um, by the way, can you make sure the suit is, you know, can, can you have the suit in the ship? It would be, it would yeah. be appreciated, you know. Yes, sir. I, although I will, I will warn you, we will prepare the ship on one of the moons. So if you wish to use the ship on this planet, then that's, you might want it separately. Oh, you got the good point. Um, all right, I, I, then never mind. Um, actually, I I do say if you're going to deliver the gun. My my precision Y rifle. Can you put this one in the ship that you're delivering on the moon? I trust that you are good b uh, businessmen that won't uh, will handle it properly. You want your rifle on the ship, sir? Yes, this one. Not oh, the, precision the old y. one. Yes. 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 That's definitely that's definitely doable. With the amount of money you're spending, there'll be no extra charge. All right. Oh. Yeah, then I say, who do I hand this to you? Uh, and he looks like uh, Tommy is clearly like working with a lot of crates right now, hey, and there's a guy hey. helping him with it. I'd uh, hand it to the, um, the shipping officer over there. All right. I walk over to the shipping officer and say, uh, we're purchasing a freighter ship, a V2. I would like this to, and I hand him my rifle. I like my rifle to be delivered to the uh, ship quarters. Uh, yes, sir. We'll send it up. If uh, if it's on Umnub, we'll send it up with Mr. Atlas's gun shipments. If not, then we'll send it up later today. Alright. I nod and hand him the rifle. Say, so, uh, be careful. It's, it's been reliable for me for many years. Y yes, sir. And, uh, also before you leave, the red jacketed attendant says, whose account is the ship going on? Uh, uh, and I turn and I say it will be a, a joint bank account, and I hand them like the account information. Uh, no, you see, we have um, purchasing accounts when you walk in. That's how we're able to, you know, get your orders ready. Oh. Um, you've got separate accounts. We've oh. been tracking what you've been buying. Which one of you will be purchasing? Sure. I guess it will be me. I'm going to be the captain of the ship. I will. Uh... I will get there. Eric, on that, sir. And then he walks down the stairs. So, yep. Yeah, give him, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then I say, all right, uh, if this is all Kasari, then we should head down and collect our stuff. Hey! So, yeah. All right, you head down, you go through the checkout, and they say to you, Kasari, that'll be 920 credits, miss. I pay it up. Without hesitation. Good. Hesitation is weakness. Whoa, and whoa, whoa. So that will be uh, 6,000. Uh, sorry, that will be 66,500 uh, 66, credits. Sir. 
All right, I give him the entirety of the group <laughs> bank account. <laughs> uh, um, that would pay for fifty nine, like fifty nine thousand three hundred something, and then I, I, and what would be left over? Oh uh, wait, so how much did you pay? The group bank account. Yeah. Okay, which is fifty nine thousand seven hundred credits. Yeah, okay, get the calculator up. I mean, it's probably easy, but fuck it. 59,000... How much? 700. 700. Which leaves 6,800. I pay him 6,800. Cool. And uh, you guys get you get your rifle and your tuxedo in a, in a nice, neat box. Because, sorry, you get two stun grenades in little cases and your comlink in a box. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, Slash, um, I will, you can either have this on your character sheet in the ship section, or I can make you a new one, um, or I can make you a ship sheet, but here are the stats for it, at least. Where's, where's last time we had you a could DM? just make a ship sheet. Okay, I will do it. I'll put it in ships. Add but, uh... character... I need to put in this new weapon I've got. Also, these clothes that I got. Oh, man. This is too much. Overspending. Indulging myself. Alright, so you now have full edit rights over the new ship character. And right. uh, you can fill in the stats. And we'll it name it when we leave the planet. Yep. yep. Alright, we'll so break a bottle guys... on it. You see a well-dressed human woman in the courtyard as you leave with your items. A well- oh, oh, the person. Okay. I walk up to her. Ah! Uh, Merkava, I presume. Uh, actually, I am not Merkava. I am Kasari Lassiter. I traveled with Merkava. I- I see. Is he... She... He... She... He... Um... <clears throat> He, uh, he, thank you, thank you. Uh, is he unavailable? He is certainly unavailable. As is Cedric. Should we oh, tell him about right the whole there. dark side thing, Sith Lord stuff? Her eyes widen. My god, Cedric. I mean, what is your name? <laughs> no, Slash? it's not Cedric. No, it's Slash. I... Ah, Slash oh, Voss! Oh man. Yes. Ah, there is a, um... A Republic official in the Laquana Hotel who is looking for you. Oh, thank you for telling me. I'll be sure to uh, meet with them. I say, uh, unfortunately, there was a bit of nasty business. Uh, Cedric and Merkava betrayed the Jedi. Oh, that's that's horrible. Um, I'm sure Master Revan has no idea. That's... Hmm. I've come to discuss this with him. Yes. Uh, I, I suppose you can use the same travel plans that we had for your former allies. Uh, I've got you both rooms in the Laquana Hotel, and we have land speeders prepared to take you to the, the outpost. It's it's under a day's journey. Um, we don't have any equipment for your surface, but I'm sure Sir Sub will provide that. But we do have the, the land speeders prepared. We can head out tomorrow morning. Oh, so we do need to buy surface equipment. Yes. Is this rifle's rarity seven? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, when you said they provide, do you mean they'll sell it to us or they'll give it to us for free? She laughs. Uh, you haven't been here long, I suppose. Every yeah, Solusu will not give it to you for free. Okay. Uh, how much do we need to buy for that? Like, what's all the equipment we need to get? Are you asking me or asking her? Her. She says uh, that. That's why we didn't really want to provide it. We we weren't sure. There was a Kaldor coming. We weren't sure exactly how much people would need. It, it's up to your your own general uh, needs. Although I, I recommend at least a suit of surface gear and a respirator. A thermal cloak would probably be good too. Oh, okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, when do you think we should head out? Well, tomorrow morning at the earliest. Um, I have some men that are going to be helping us from the Constable Brigade. Um, but... Uh, if you have things to do here tomorrow, then uh, no, no, anytime no, tomorrow will work. Tomorrow at the morning is is, is great. Uh, where should we meet? Outside the hotel or? 
Uh, here is fine, she says, looking around the courtyard. Um, Very well. I will I will escort you through the personal turbo lift to the south of town, and we will meet the constable grid on the surface. The Sulistans need a little bit less protection, so they can head out there a little earlier. Great. Well, I think then I will go back in and get the equipment I need. All right, let me just paste you the, like, descriptions of all of that equipment. You can choose what you want. Hopefully it's all together. And it's, yeah, it's pretty much together. So here are the thermal cloak and surface gear equipments. Uh, so <clears throat> the thermal cloak is, removes two setback. Uh, from resilience checks to handle hot or cold climates, and the arms, uh, the service of arms surface gear removes one setback imposed by Solus environment, and then these are the two respirators. Can I wear the s suit under my armor? Armored clothing? Or can I... Wear the armored clothing, I guess, under the suit. Uh, you could. I would say that you could wear the suit under the armored clothing, um, but it, the suit wouldn't have its effect since nobody would see it. Um, and I think that the fit would be a little too tight for you to wear the armored clothing under the suit. With a skilled mechanic, or if you wanted to give it a go, you could probably transfer the armored properties from that armored clothing onto the suit. Clothing from the okay, then I'll just keep the suit folded up. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you step. go back in and try? Want to buy some surface gear, by the way? Me? Yeah. Are we provided surface gear? You were not. I. I say sorry. Here's. A thousand one hundred credits for the surface gear. Why don't you go in and buy some for the two of us, and I'll go meet with that Republic contract. Do you also want a respirator or a thermal cloak? Oh shit, we need a respirator too. How much was the respirator? If you look in the Star Wars chat, I pasted it. Six hundred for the respirator for the surface. Uh, hand them an extra six hundred. <laughs> uh, thank you. I take it inside. Peace. Okay, you just uh, send me a DM, Marshall, uh, of exactly what you're buying and the price, and then just remove it, um, and we'll deal with Sless's, um We'll deal with Sless's meeting. So you head into a very fancy hotel, the Laquana Hotel, uh, Sless, and you can see in the middle an absolutely incredible lava fountain that has somehow been created that goes through the core of this building. It's a very large and clearly fancy hotel, and um, you are told as you walk in that the uh, official that you are looking for is in uh, a part is in room 402 I had the room 402 uh, you knock on the door and you hear from inside come in walk in there is a uh, a woman dressed in a um, republic navy outfit sitting at a, at a table with a already two glasses of brown liquid poured ah sles Voss, a pleasure to meet you uh, the pleasure's mine. Um, may I know who I'm speaking to? Why, of course. Uh, my name is Ensign Amanda Russo. I work on behalf of Captain Hoff of the Re Re Republic Security Bureau. Mm. Very fancy. I take a, I, I take a sip of the drink. So this is a planet of very little importance to the Republic, but Captain Hoff has taken an interest in it. He's been frustrated by the lack of the Republic's ability to bring a war criminal to justice, and would like to take drastic measures. Who's this war criminal? A engineer by the name of Beodur. He designed a horrific weapon that ended the Mandalorian Wars. He was a... He, he did serve trial, and for a time, he was under captivation, but he escaped. And uh, ever since, the Republic have failed to recapture him. We have reason to believe he is here on this planet. Uh-huh. 
Beodor, huh? Okay. Uh, I, I, I look and say, you have any idea what he looks like? Um, species? He's an Iridonian. Um, mm -hmm. Last we heard, missing an arm. Mm. He, uh, although I will have to say there are a few complications with this mission. Um, Captain Hoff did ask for you specifically, but you have taken your time. And unfortunately, I have employed a hmm, another bounty hunter in the meantime. Shit. It's definitely the droid. Ask if it's the droid. And um, who is this second bounty hunter? Mm. So a Mandalorian. Oh, never mind. <laughs> By the name of Corto Vos. If you want the job, you will have to take care of that other bounty hunter. How you do it is up to you. What? But I want proof that they're gone. Wait, this dude's like, look, you can work it's for a, it's me, a woman. but you have to... Oh, this woman's like, you can work for me, but you have to kill the other person I'm paid. <laughs> or, you know, just get him to no longer want the job. Celeste, he probably offered the other guy the same thing. Do I, do I know it? this Corto Vos? Uh, why don't you make an outer rim knowledge check? Uh, it's gonna be hard. Oof. Nah. You know that the name is vaguely Mandalorian. And, uh, kind of modern Mandalorian. There are, there's a, a subtle, I mean, this is a lot of information for you. You'll be fought in the war. There is a subtle difference between old Mandalorian names and new ones, and they must be reasonably young, at least as far as Mandalorian goes. But so I don't know anything about that specific person. Hmm. I, uh. He's actually staying back. at the Laquana Hotel a few doors down. Perfect. All the a great play. opportunity to get to know him. And maybe convince him to sit back on this one. Captain Hoff is a very well connected member of the RBS, uh, R RSB, sorry. He could offer you a lot of resources. Definitely consider this job with high priority. Well. There's no other job at the moment on this planet, so it has the highest of priorities. I, uh, I, uh, take, uh, another drink and, uh, I, I look and say, as for this bounty, is there no other information you can provide me? Any clues? I can. If you return to me once the other bounty hunter is disposed of, I will have more information. All right. I, I sit up. I say, and I'll be back soon, hopefully. I don't imagine this is going to take long. Excellent. I'm sure Captain Hoff will be very impressed by your expediency. Well, in dealing with situations rather than arriving at them. And... Uh, I close the Oof. door and I, I, I say, actually, before I close the door, and you said a few doors down, four, you know the room number? Four doors to the left. I don't know the room number. I nod. I begin to head four da down four doors to the left. You get to the door. I, uh, I knock on it. It opens, and Chris, would you like to describe your new character? <laughs> All right, well. Um, pretty much average build to average height. Um, decked out in a rather unique set, or looking set of uh, the classic Mandalorian armor. And, uh, yeah, I've got two pistols holstered at my side, and, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all you could get from appearances, considering I'm wearing a helmet. I look and I say... Greetings, friend. I hear you've recently taken up a very interesting job offer. Well, there's only one way in particular you could have known that I was taking And if you're the person that was for me. Yeah, for me too. Oh, God damn it. Um, 
the right, anyway, internet does not want this character better. to exist. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, there's only one way that you get you really could have known about me taking that job and that's that you're the original person who was going to take it. Indeed I am. And I want you to drop it. Why would that be? Because it's my job, not yours. You were picked out of desperation. Let the real professional handle it and get your Mandalorian ass out of this issue. Oh, God. Ugh. Hold on. My headset is... So as you see this Mandalorian, um, you notice that the, the well... armor is... Oh. The armor is, is, is indeed very unique. Pieces of it seem to be differently colored as if taken from different sets of armor. The model looks pretty similar, but it's definitely not one one suit. Well, anyway, um, yeah, I sort of need this job. So I'm going to have to politely decline your um, threat. I uh, I grab him by the shoulder, not aggressively, and I say, "Let me come in and let's have a drink, oh, real God. quick." All right, we'll talk it out. And I say, um, "Do you have any whiskey? Anything strong?" I'll flip Destiny to have it suddenly. Okay. Um. I would have asked Putty if you had it first. Maybe you No. I don't know. I'm here to be a hindrance. Hello. No. I so, grab the bottle. You're, no, you're not. You're here to be a party member. <laughs> I, I grab the bottle, sit down on what uh, presumably a couch, and I begin to pour myself a drink, and I pour him a drink, and I say... By the way, Putty, I, I, I flipped Destiny to have this be the strongest conceivable whiskey possible okay do you do you want it to be strong enough that like it's you're almost trying to drug slash because with the destiny flip i'll let you do that yeah like, no, do you no, want to try and knock it out? okay and i know it and i'm going to gingerly sip it while, while slash, slash. did you um did you said you drank it i drank a little bit yeah all oh, right <laughs> why don't you make a uh a hard Resilience check with one of the dice upgraded because there's something in it. No, oh, I'm gonna fail this check. This well, actually, is, maybe not. Is ahead of the curve. Um, I guess I'll upgrade the check because I don't want to pass out. Oh yeah, I like how you're both using destiny lights. I know. So you're I know. Each other. <laughs> Charles, upgrade the checks. Uh, I get. No, no, actually, stop. I want to no, no. no. help in Chris. Check. Uh, <laughs> so it's a hard one with what? With one challenge because it's. Charles, are you actually upgrading this? So it's three no, challenge, no. one red die. It's one challenge, which is a red die, and two difficulty, which are purple. Oh, okay. Oof. Oof. So you take a, a long, hard drink, and you notice that this is some serious alcohol, but it's not necessarily uh, a strength that you've never had before. It's just that most people your age and your peer group don't tend to have this kind of stuff anymore. It's a nice, pleasant surprise, because you've had a glass of this over the years, uh -huh. and uh, it's definitely you know something that you occasionally enjoy in your private life. Although you do notice that it's not been brewed for enjoyment. It's been brewed for for pure and unadulterated inebriation, and you're a little bit suspicious as to why this relatively young looking, although, you know, he does have a helmet on, uh, Mandalorian has offered you this drink. It's a, it's a strange, it's a strange sight. I look at it and I say, this is, um, strong stuff, hey friend. Uh, well, yeah, you asked for it. I mean, you, you literally asked for it. You asked for it. Just I never face. asked for this. What's the view like in this place? Uh, He's got his curtains drawn. 
I pull off the curtains. Oh, well, oh. not pull them off, pull them back. Yeah, it's very presumptuous. Oh, no. Looks like the skeletons him. fall out. <laughs> you, you, you see yeah. him. Uh, Call, uh, you see him walk across your room like he owns the place and open the curtains to see the wonderful skyline of the chamber floor, uh, a little bit of magma dripping off the side of the building, but a lot of quite high skyscrapers in the surrounding vista. You ever wonder what it'd be like fly to fly? To, to fly? Yes. Like, in a ship? No. Like a bird. I mean, whoa! Celeste the pterodactyl. Oh God, Celeste is about to throw you out the window. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's only one thing this conversation means. <laughs> Wait, hold on. My, I, I cut out. What did he say? He asked, "Have you ever wondered what it was like to fly like a bird?" Uh, and Marshall is can't. suspicious. <laughs> can't say that I have. Not sure what you're getting at here. I thought we were t here to, you know drink and discuss business we are discussing business but how could you have a view like this and keep the curtains shut well we... i don't know if if you know what a mandalorian is but we like to keep to ourselves after <laughs> you know the war no oh, i know man plenty of mandalorians killed Quite a few of you during that war. Uh, good times. I did always like that the Mandalorian persona always seems to falter after you kill one or two of their big dog commanders. They yeah. are truly a bit cowardly if you think about it. Well, uh, this has been a good talk. Um... It's a shame we couldn't come to terms, and, uh... No, we're not done That's talking. Job. No. Uh, I walk over to him. Are you him sure you want to know what it's like to with... fly? <laughs> I will walk over to him with my gun drawn. Is this the precision wire rifle? Yep. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, it's a shame. I say... Why don't you walk over to this window here for real quick for me? No, don't do that. <laughs> oh, don't. If you don't, then I'll have to exercise my right of disposing you however I choose. Um, let's see. <laughs> this uh, is not a republic world, friend. It is a world with laws. I assume? Maybe? I actually don't know. <laughs> it's run by a literal corporatist society that dissolved what seemed like the equivalent of, like, their council. Yeah, but okay. it's like chaos. Well, buddy, here's the order of operations. Uh-huh. I'm drawing. Yes. Making sure I'm on stun. Okay. And fire. So Roll initiative. Uh, I'll say slash roll cool and uh, call Koto your roll vigilance. Nice. The worst part is, I think I would rather have been surprised. <laughs> then you should have waited. Oh wait, time. I was in a roll PC. Uh, what Koto? You be the NPC. So roll NPC. Hey, now that's a roll. And that's not a roll. That's a roll. <laughs> All right, so you notice uh, the the mean Trandoshan man holding the gun to your head, but you're definitely with your quick draw pistols able to get him out before anything else. So you're firing on him. Holy shit! Oh, yeah. So I'm going to spend two maneuvers aiming. Can I take it? This is short range. So what's the difficulty? You're engaged. You're engaged. Wait, you're. Spending both your maneuvers aiming? Yes. You can't do that. You can stack it up your choice. You're engaged, which means if you don't move out of engaged, you will suffer a penalty. You, you're probably better off moving out of engaged and just using one maneuver to aim. Because the penalty you suffer is greater than the benefit you get from aiming. 
Okay, then I'll spend a single maneuver, like disengaging and getting to short. And and, and I'm up upgrading so, the check with destiny. Okay, so, so one the, challenge. Uh, so it's a single challenge. Well, no, yeah, it'll be a single challenge, yeah. but you're using both pistols, so it's going to be a challenge and a difficulty. Okay. And you get your boost. And, and also, defense. yeah, I have one range defense, and also I'm going to dodge, spend two strain to dodge. Okay, in that case, it's going to be two challenge and the difficulty, because it's been upgraded three times now. Wait. Two challenge and a difficulty. Yeah, because it was uh, it was one oh, challenge and a difficulty, and then Sless upgraded it to two challenge, and then Sless upgraded it again, adding another difficulty. And also one step back from range defense one. So it starts as a single purple die. Then... No, no, it starts as a double purple die. Okay, was... got it. Okay. So. Oof. <laughs> Race. Okay. So you take um, thirteen Zinzlin's battle theme since you're never gonna get to hear it actually fighting Zinzlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you take thirteen strain. You can soak it though. Yeah. Okay, take that hit. Is it, uh, is that is it? Is he looking sufficiently tired? Uh, let me have a look. I think, I think he is. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, is man. the... To, um... Sorry, Chris, you cut out. So do I apply both of their damage, or do I still need to... Wait, what? So you is it... Does, do the pistols function off, like, a the, sort of, like, a pseudo-linked quality? Or no. did I fire with both and hit with both? Uh, success. Yeah, I will say in narrative you fired with both and hit with both, but you did 13 damage. Okay, so I don't apply both the pistols damage. You need advantage to do that. Uh, yes, Les looks exhausted. You got a great hit on him. Absolutely knackered him, and he's surprised and very upset that you managed to get out of his wonderfully crafted mini ambush. Alright. Now we, now we wait to see if Chris ever decides to let the next turn happen. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta reload roll 20 because apparently there's a connection issue. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I have a question because I haven't had a chance of looking at this gun features, the gun features yet. Yeah. So, bear with me a bit, Putty. What uh -huh. does slow firing do? It means that after you fire it, you must wait a turn afterwards before you can fire it again. Okay. Prepare uh, means you have to... Prepare two means you have to do two maneuvers before you can fire it in the first place. Okay. It's clearly a bolt action blaster. Alright. And accurate two um, is I add two boost die, I'm just guessing? Correct. Okay. And I'm also upgrading the check. Okay. Do you take the two prepare maneuvers, though? Yes. So uh, you take two strain for that. Wait, um, I don't have just my two base maneuvers? You only get one maneuver. I thought you get two. You get a second yep. one if you take strain or give up your action. Yep. Oh. Okay. <laughs> How did you forget that? Two maneuvers is the maximum you can take in the turn, not your base. Well, then I'm fucked, I guess. Uh, oh, I'm okay with that. Go to sleep. You can so always shoot weapon. next turn. Oh, wait, no, no, I don't. don't. You need a pistol! I mean, you well, no, you do have another weapon. You're a Trandoshan. Kitty got claws. I can do... five damage. <laughs> Plus but success. Your, but yeah. your your unarmed attacks have innate qualities like um, disorient and stuff. So like you know. Okay. 
I guess I go I'll, I'll use my maneuver to punch him. Well, it's your action to punch him. Yeah. To maneuver to get into engaged. Yeah. Um. I you also, with one push. maneuver, could get out the door. I don't know if I want to leave. Um. Hold on, I need to check. Okay, there it is. Claws. Plus one damage, crit rating of three. So yeah, I'll, I'll hit him. I'll, I'll use my maneuver to move and engage and hit him. I'm oh. upgrading this check, so... It's one challenge to one difficulty, though. And um, one step back from melee defense. Ooh! Ooh! That is... Can I use that threat to boost myself? Yeah, oh. yeah, definitely. Because Slash is very happy if you do that. Yeah, he definitely opens himself up to his next attack and you get a boost on your next attack. How much damage are you dealing, Slash? I'm dealing... Five... Nine damage? That's true. Um, and you can soak it. I take three. Also, uh, how did you work that out? Don't you have two soak from your armor, uh, two soak from your brawn, and then one soak from armor master? Or am I missing something? Else? Superior quality. Oh yeah, cool. Stop fighting, guys. It's right. not fun. Uh huh. Ah. You kind of got you trapped up against the corner, uh, Koto. So, you couldn't really disengage to short range without getting past him. And with his claws dug into the wall behind you, you think it'd be difficult to do that. You should fly! Alright, well, I'll... Slash will it next. Yeah, oh. I'm going to roll Destiny on this next Whoa. attack. You know what would be badass? If you were like, you know what, I've never wondered what it's like to fly, because I already can. And he jumps out the window and activates his jetpack. Okay, now keep in mind <laughs> that you're gonna... You're engaged with him, so the difficulty is gonna be base 3. Um, and, uh, Charles, are you upgrading this check? Uh, no, I'm not. So, uh, are you dodging, Slash? I'll oh. spend one strain to dodge. Okay, so it is going to be one challenge and two difficulty. Challenge, two difficulty. There's no setback. There is, I think. Right, Slash? One. Whoa! Whoa! You're lucky this is stun. Apparently I am. What are those other boosts from? Well, I- oh, I didn't- I, I meant to declare, but I was gonna aim twice and take the- Okay, take the strain, though. Yeah. Okay. So, um... Well, you take, um... It's gonna be an Agi-5 dual-wielding <laughs> monstrosity, I guess. You know, yeah, you take another 12 stun before, so... Yeah, I know, no, I'm knocked out, but okay. What are you doing with the, the thing, though? Because you can... I'm, I'm gonna... You can... I, I'm gonna take the triumph to make sure he doesn't hurt himself when he falls over. Aww. That's no fun. No, All more right. so, I don't want the sound of a body thump I coming out the, of my room. I use the triumph to... Sh Shatter him through the window is what you meant to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> now All you right. know what it's like to fly, bitch! <laughs> Have you ever I wondered? Then, I, I then Slash turns into his greater form. Right. The so, Trandoshan. Um, <laughs> Trandoshan eagle? Like a Dagestani <laughs> eagle? I'm God. going to grab the gun. I'm going okay. to close the door. Lock it and shoot it. Whoa! Shoot! Wait! Shoot the door? What the fuck? Yeah, shoot the. I'm gonna make sure it can't open. All right, you shoot the door. It, it till it like flies open when you do so. <laughs> and the lock is broke. I didn't think that was gonna work. I'm gonna make sure the door doesn't open. Shoots it a thousand times. <laughs> Damn it! There's no door there. All right. Well, <laughs> but you managed to successfully tuck the Trandoshan into bed. The all wall's right. got some nice claw marks, though. Ah, uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna go pawn his gun. You're gonna go pawn his gun? Yep. 
<laughs> All right. What are you? What are you planning on? How? How are you planning on doing that? Well, I, I um. Let's see. Uh, you have here I... is this shady weapons dealer down in rural town called Gizmo. Oh, yeah. I'll head to Gizmo. I assume I've heard of him before. All right. As you leave the hotel, Kasari, you see a uh, Mandalorian fully draped in traditional Mandalorian armor, leaving the hotel with a gun that you're pretty sure Slash just bought. Uh, do I have all the things I just bought? Yes. Okay. By the way, when I went back into the store, I would have checked on the droid again. Nothing had happened to it in the time that. Loft. By the way, Slice, remove 1,700 credits if you haven't already for the stuff Sorry, bought for you. Okay. I... I think back. Do I remember him saying that that gun was very rare? Like, one of a kind? Well, each of them were handcrafted and were a tiny bit different in design. Um, but they do sell them. But they are expensive. So you, you presume... That looks like the one. Looks like the one Slice bought, yeah. Coming out exactly the same hotel I went into. <laughs> that is true. That seems suspicious. I follow him. Also, you <laughs> notice in the building, by the way, it's a very well designed hotel. Not well designed, but it's beautiful. Very uh, kind of unique architecture, oh, and it has a lava fountain running through the center of it. By the way, could I have had the uh, store send all the stuff I just bought to my room at the hotel? Yeah, they'd, they'd allow you to do that. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so I will follow this good sir um, creepily behind him. Actually, I'm not. I know I'm terrible at stealth, so I'm not going to try to sneak. I'm just going to walk nonchalantly. Why don't you just confront him? Okay, why don't you make an average streetwise check? I'm not certain that he's done anything wrong yet. I'm not. I don't just. I don't just say weird shit to people about flying, Celeste. That's not my thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know how I got these scars? Let's say if you have window. <laughs> I, one time I... From accidentally falling out of a window Wait, and not okay. becoming a pterodactyl. Did you say it was streetwise? Average, Average streetwise check to see how you blend with the walking crowd. Oh no. So. You blend in with the walking crowd with all the subtlety and grace of a Narshada local. Um, and hey, you, uh, I go around like, what's up? <laughs> and Chris, you notice walking behind you a human amongst Solistans Solis dressed in Jedi robes. Uh, I'm going to immediately turn face and go, are you here to jump me too? Were you recently jumped? Yes, uh... Call I... this number for support. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, I was just attacked in my room by a, uh, Trindosh and uh, took his gun. Uh... I say... <laughs> you say he attacked he... you? Yeah, he, he came into my room, demanded alcohol, and then attacked me. I would say that's a deception check. That's not the full story. I say it again, Chris? Let me, let me hear that before I decide. <laughs> no, he came into my room, said, Hey, yo, you want a drink? And then attacked me. After making some uh, comments about flying. I think that's pretty much accurate. There was an extra thing. Are we not a, are we ignoring the part where he wanted to drug me? I mean... It's just alcohol. Okay. Also, yeah. that part, also, Sless... Sless opened it up by saying you're on the same job I am. Like, that was part of the interaction. I, I tell you what, why don't you make an easy deception check? Even if he doesn't, I mean, I still have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys have definitely <laughs> rose enough concerns to say that he's not telling the whole picture. So make an easy deception. That's... the hell is deception? Oh, okay. 50-50, uh, basically. <laughs> an easy? That's... You have one die? Oh, that's not 50-50. No, 50-50 is, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you think that maybe, maybe he's withholding some things, but you think the gist is about right, <laughs> that he's he's not trying to lie to you. So Celeste came in and wanted Wait, you know his name? Yes, he's a... a, a <laughs> it's complicated. Companion? A pet. 
That sounds unethical. You might want to be careful around him. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go sell this gun. Wait, no, no. Please don't sell this gun. It was very expensive. Well, he's obviously a danger to have with it. Well, yeah, but that's kind of the point. He's good at... Look, I... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say, what, what can I do to make it up to you? I believe you. It does sound something somewhat less like Um, <laughs> you know what? I have a job to do if you want to help me with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> what sort of job, actually? What sort of job? Uh, well, it's actually the job that your uh, companion he, he is. He uh, me. All he told me was he was had to kill someone, and I'm not a big fan of killing people. Oh, okay. Yeah, by the way, you would know, Mer uh, not Mercado. He's dead. Uh, no, uh, oh, you would know no. <laughs> <laughs> that they never specified you had to kill him. You can yeah. capture this guy. No, no, uh, we can capture this guy if you're not comfortable killing. As a matter of fact, uh, it's kind of what I did to your friend if uh, I let him live in case you cared. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I say... Uh, who is it that you're trying to capture? Buddy, who is it? Uh, an, an engineer war criminal by the name of Bayodur. I just yeah, want it's... to point out, out of character, if tr he decided to actually do actual damage to me, I would have probably won that fight. <laughs> the joy of not doing actual damage to you, though. Yeah, yep. Thank God he didn't make such a terrible decision as that. That would have been a horrible tactical choice. No, I'm just... <laughs> anyway. Um... But yeah, uh, do you say that, or...? No, um... Uh, yeah, basically, um, war criminal, engineer, alive or dead doesn't really matter, but um, if you want to take him alive, I'd be more than willing. If you're uh, willing to help, I'll even split the bounty with you. War criminal? Yep. What if, instead of splitting the bounty with me, you split the bounty with Sless? <gasps> what a novel concept! Are you sure he'd even be open to that? I don't know, but I, I mean... feel like this is what the DM meant for it. I mean, sorry, I'm... I'm sorry, what just, I, I just had a stroke. What I meant was... <laughs> yeah, my nose is bleeding now. I don't know what you did, but don't do that ever again. <laughs> the sky is shaking. What's happening? <laughs> anyway, this place doesn't even have a sky, but it's shaking nonetheless. Anyway, I, I say... That's why it's shaking. I mean, it's the sky here. could be shaking here, but it would be very worrying if it was. That's true, because we're, like, underground, right? Yeah. By the way, I want to say this... If Chris doesn't actually end up selling my gun. I, it, I did inc decrease its critical rating down to a 1 with my uh, ability. Do it. While I hold it. <laughs> well, either way. Oh, uh, okay. if... I say, I say. look, I, I know he was a bit of a dick to you, uh, but what if I was able to convince him to help you on the job instead of me? Because it's kind of his job, it's his profession. I, I don't want to really get involved. Well, he seems grossly incompetent with how he, you know, tried to deal with me, but I mean, if you want to convince him. <laughs> no, I, I promise, he's very competent, he's also pretty good at long range, but I think he just got a little bit upset. He gets upset a lot. I notice. I look at your armor and I say, did you take that from someone else, or are you, you know. It's composited, um, but yes, I suppose the base of this stuff is mine. So you're a Mandalorian? Absolutely. Huh. So, how do you feel about catching someone from your own side? Well, side is a... Uh, you see what I did there, buddy? I did. Yeah. A uh, generous thing there. Oh, but buddy did I mean, Chris didn't see... <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll explain it to Chris. Kasari is clearly implying that the only war criminals in the Mandalorian Wars are your people. Oh, but oh. in this case, you know that the person you are after is a Republic war criminal. Who yeah. is on the Republic oh, side. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> he committed, you but know... Kasari doesn't know that. Anyway. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, my bad. Anyway. 
Yeah, no. Uh, he committed his war crimes in the name of the Republic, so... Um, what? You can, you, yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks for the racism, though. I always appreciate it. <laughs> I say, I apologize. What, what did he do? War crimes. No, you I... were told, Chris, that he designed a horrible weapon that killed many. Yeah, no. Basically, um, weird, unethical super weapons. I know. To someone like you, it must be strange for a Mandalorian to bring up ethics. But, um, we're people too. Just, uh, thought I'd have to <laughs> explain that to you. Damn, this is rough. <laughs> I feel like the racism is going both ways now. I, well, no, I, I think I think he's just defending himself. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't say anything mean about humans. Also, also, Mandalorian's more of, like, it's not even a. It's not even like. A, it's a culture. Yeah, it's a culture. But you can tell like me. You can, yeah. yeah. Oh shit! You gonna say shit about? <laughs> you gonna say shit about my people? <laughs> no. Um. I I say. Uh, anyway, I know he probably left you with a bad first impression. To be honest, he left me with a horrible first impression when I met him. But. What was our first impression? Uh, I think I walked up and you were like, "Let's kill some people." <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! My first impression of you was you, you were you were mean as fuck to the Wookie. Oh, <laughs> you were really mean to the Wookie. I had to tell. I had to. I had to basically give the Wookie a motivational speech just to be in the same room with you. <laughs> oh, oh, the memories. Anyway, I say. Look, I yeah. thought our first impression was uh, at the space station because you met up with Cedric, and then that's oh, when I, I came well, I in and walked up. To... I wasn't much impressed until the Wookiee <laughs> thing. Until the Wookiee thing, nothing impressed upon me. I just thought, eh, this is a guy, and then I was like, oh, he's a guy who hates Wookies. What the fuck? <laughs> but uh, well, either way, I if say you the say first impression can... was rough, and yeah, he did some things in the middle there that were, and then there was that. Look, the point is, he has... <laughs> no, there was the genocide. <laughs> I say, he's good at his job, and if you're looking for someone to, you know, assist you, it would really uh, mean a lot to me if you involved him. I'll talk to him to make sure he doesn't attack you again. I want to be there when you talk to him, but all right. I'll throw Kasari slash his gun. Okay. I say, fool, and I kill you with it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh... <laughs> that it killed pretty good. That would be fucking nuts, wouldn't it? Anyway. It's like, well, looks like I'm the new light side party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be... Okay. Um, I, 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 sort of, I sort of head back with him to the, to the hotel. Okay, you guys head up to his room where you see Slash very unconscious in his bed. I say, you left the door open? I don't make good decisions. <laughs> anyway. I also want to point out, he called me grossly incompetent and tried to shut a door <laughs> locked by shooting it. The irony is not lost on me. <laughs> I I walk up to Sless and uh, prop him up. I'm going to pour alcohol on his face. No, what the fuck? I don't let you... T I, I, I hold out a hand to say, don't do that. Fine, I'll take a drink. I, you, uh... I prop him up on a bed. He looks super out of it. Although, you sense... What, you remember when you look at him that, one, you do have a healing rock. And two, uh, Surus have sold things called Relaxo Stims. Would you mind getting a Relaxo Stim from across the street? Uh, yeah, I've been meaning to fix him up anyway. I'll, how much are they? How much are they, bud? Two, two fifty. Jesus Christ, two fifty. I hand you two hundred fifty credits. I'll pick up three. So I'm gonna spend five hundred of my own credits. Okay, I can say you go over there. Nobody really bats an eye, although they're a little suspicious of the guy in full clad Mandalorian armor. Uh, they do eventually hand you three Zerka branded Relaxo stims. All right. You return. Do you inject slash with one? Uh, yeah. Alright, so let's make an easy resilience check. Uh, 
All right, this counts as a use of a stim pack, but you recover five strain instead of five wounds. That's great and all, but I'm still yeah. unconscious. I'm God aware. Damn it! I smack him some more. <laughs> it's less you take a wound. No, not that hard. <laughs> Only one wound. It. Uh, oh, he's so uh, fine. Yeah, I slapped him across his armor. <laughs> Which is fairly ineffectual. <laughs> you can't soak wounds, you can only soak damage for the fine. Uh, <laughs> I <just got laughs> drunk just then. I say, would just you, a little bit. Do you mind giving him another? Uh, I'm sorry, I says bogarting the healing rock with only a few minutes of the session left. Oh, that's fair. I, I can use the healing rock. Can the healing rock <laughs> heal strength? I think one of the upgrades. Let's 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 read together. Oh shit! I don't have my force powers thing anymore. You can read. <laughs> no way! I'll find it in the book. I have the book open. Here it is. Buh, buh, buh. It's probably a control. Yeah, if you uh, if you use no dark side points on it, the target heals strain equal to wounds healed. Great. I'll do that. I'll use the healing rock to heal him. Alright, flip your destiny. And then roll a force power check. Fuck, I keep fucking up. Okay. Yeah, fuck of course you do, Marshall. It's you. Whoa, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bruh. So, you're able to... Ba, 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 you're able to... Use one to activate it, and if you spend the other three on strength, you will... What's your intellect? My intellect is two. Uh, so, if you spend the other three on strength, you will heal eight wounds and eight strain on Slash if you dedicate the points that way. I do that. Okay. Slash, you've now used two stim packs today. And you recover eight wounds. You see as radiant light pours out of my hand stone into Celeste. I, I'm going to back away slightly from I that. Awaken. Celeste, you feel yourself filled with this almost sense of belonging. You feel yourself connected to everything in the room. Like, th like the a energy. Pacifist. Like the <laughs> en <laughs> Like you can feel every living creature and every little fiber of the room. And you realize that between them, they're all connected by this energy and then you snap out of it oh for a second and then i remember oh. oh who where i am and i stare and i ready my fist hey, 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 i say it's okay Sless. it's okay. my gun no Sless. we're not we're not where's gonna, my gun we're not gonna fight Sless. <laughs> Sless. we're not gonna fight just i oh no i promise i won't fight can i have my gun though it seems like <laughs> Can I, roll I don't, don't want to judge check. your character, Slus, but it seems like you're going to pick up the gun and shoot him as soon as I hand it to you. I'm going to no. roll a deception check on that. She knows you too well. I wouldn't shoot him. It's right away. <laughs> Precedent dictates otherwise, friend. It's not my fault the bastard tried to drug me after a conversation. Were you trying to drug him, I turned back? It's Ah, oh, bounty the hunters! And I kick the bounty <laughs> I'm gonna hold Hand up the bottle and gun, say, I don't know what he's going to do. Oh my god. He's I'm gonna hold up the bottle and say, it's just strong alcohol. You, you asked for whiskey. It's whiskey. <laughs> uh -huh. As a uh, resident of Narshida, you've seen that, that concentration before in people in gutters drinking themselves to death. Holy shit! That's what old Mac used to drink when he was really depressed. He died well, drinking that. Well, I, it's only you know been that way that's since like, you know. That's like 198 proof. I mean, yeah, but there's it's only 99 percent. Dude, there's a stain on the ceiling where it's where the fumes have started to eat through the paint. <laughs> 
<laughs> can I? Is that true, buddy? Can I say that that's true? There, there is a stain on the ceiling. You may say that is what it's from. Anyway, <laughs> I say, look, man. I propose something. Both of you apparently are on the same mission. I suggest that instead of trying to kill or capture each other, you just work together and split the bounty 50-50. This gentleman has already pretty much agreed to it, Sless. I look at him. I say, so about my gut. Oh my god, Sless. <laughs> what about I my can't... proposition? <laughs> Can I really trust a Mandalorian? Do you know how many they've killed? <laughs> and do you know how many you... that person brought? You know how how that person treated me? I was a guest in his hotel room. Slash, you brag about the thousands of people you've murdered every day. Of course, but that's my religion thousands. to kill. <laughs> At this point, you hear a large boom, and the, the whole room begins to shake. I hand Celeste the gun. <laughs> <laughs> I say, that wasn't me. I say, perhaps a ceasefire at least until we figure out what that is. Well, I take no issue. You hear a second boom and a larger shake. The... Yeah, no, this is bad. I check outside. What's going you on? look outside and see the pillar that is further away from you, the one that would be next in line from the centroplex, shaking. Oh, that is not good, I say. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, um, let's try not voice. to die. <laughs> so, I will say this. If I have to choose between the two of you, I'm saving Kasari. As you guys start running over there, the, the booms continue and the shakes continue until about halfway there, they stop entirely. Kasari, you sense dark presence ahead of you. Oh. They're here, Celeste. I can feel them. Um, what? You can feel terrorists? I can feel <laughs> darksiders. It's voodoo stuff. Sheesh, you think that these guys would know the official religion of the Republic a bit better. It's not called voodoo stuff you know about as much! <laughs> you should have a little bit more reverence did for you... what I assume to be Jedi. Did you... Now oh, I like that, yeah. Slightly, <laughs> <laughs> someone with some manners. <laughs> Treats a lady like a lady. <laughs> I say, either way, you confront them, I'm going to find a good posi sniper position. I say, well, aren't they really far away? Am I in a position to confront them? No, nah, you're going to need to run a couple more blocks. I'm All right. going to uh, find... Last time, actually, last time I found police officers to, to, to <laughs> confront them, they all died. So, Kasari's not going to put more people's lives in, you're gonna let them die off life. screen instead of on screen exactly yeah. exactly so kasari's gonna start heading towards the blast and slash i guess you're just sticking to the shadows hoping to get a glimpse so you can sit down and snipe yep okay and what is the mandalorian friend doing uh i'm gonna follow the nice person all right you follow slash into the shadow no i'm kidding <laughs> 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 and you follow Kasari, and you guys eventually get to the pillar. The only sense of life here is the pillar has got a massive crack and crater in the side of it, and inside lays a gargantuan man who seems to have been pushed and cratered into the side of it. He's coughing, barely conscious. I run over to him. <coughs> he was here, that fucking tin can. I almost got him. Are you the senator? I met yeah. you. Yeah, the Jedi from Umnhub. <laughs> I came down here, uh, I heard they got off fucking Salon, and I thought I could catch them, but I can't take both of them. I pull out a stim pack and give it to him. Here. <laughs> Thank you. Whew. Yeah. He's more than my match. I underestimated him. The Tin Man strikes again. I don't know. I look.
look to your stat block, man. I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, it was a shitty Colto stim pack. <laughs> okay. Um, and I say, uh, I I say, oh, what did he come here for? I don't, I don't know. If I did, I would probably know his movements a little better. What blew this place to pieces? It sounded like explosions went off. Do they have bombs? <laughs> he smiled. And we were throwing each other into the pillar. What? That was from you throwing each other? He nods. Okay, that's just absurd. <laughs> <laughs> I say, okay, um, look. So, you didn't see them holding anything? They, they just came here and you confronted them? Yes. The, uh, the older one, the Kaldor, got away very quickly. But the Tin Man can never resist a challenge. Tin Man is an interesting thing to call him. But got makes... all that chrome on him. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I guess, yeah. To be fair, we made fun of him for that, too, before he went to the dark side. Did you try knocking him over? Yeah, what happened when you... What happened whenever you hit him? Did he collapse? I, I don't know why I think that's a thing, but I... <laughs> did, did that happen? He, shook his head, he shakes his head and says, No, um, but he seemed less nimble than I've seen him. I don't, I don't think his leg opens wrong. Turned him off because he knew that you'd fuck him up if you had him on. Smart. Okay, well, uh, we should probably get you to a hospital. Can you walk? Charles screams internally. <laughs> he coughs. The support pillar to the south is a medical station. I must appreciate it. I can walk, but I could use some support. Yeah. All right. I'll help you. Take uh, my two brawn. Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I say, by the way, this is, uh, actually, we were never introduced. What's your name? Corda. Corda? Cordo. Corto. Mrs. Corto. Corto, this is Senator Armstrong. Nice to meet you. Are you, you steal that armor or are you Mando? Uh, Mando, but hardly in with them now, so do with that what you will. I don't hold crutches. Oh, good. Guys... I look at the giant wall imprints. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, neither do I. So we're gonna figure out whether Slast and Cordo can get along, whether they can hunt the war criminal, what the Sith are after, all that and more. Next time on Dunes of Utapau, because that's where we're gonna leave it off this week. Dunes of Salt. Da, da, da. Like <laughs> all right. So, stun settings, huh? <laughs> Wait, okay. of course this new gun doesn't have one. Neither oh, did my man. old gun. Oh, I've never had a weapon oh. with a stun setting before. All, all outro this week. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed. And hopefully, next week, uh, our party can meet up with Revan. Because I'm pretty excited about that. But also, hopefully, HK47 won't destroy the universe. Um, but if he does, I hope, uh, Armstrong's I hope here to help. I feel bad for Baldor. He doesn't I, deserve it. Uh, you know what? I think this whole Baldor's a work. Well, we'll talk about that after. But uh, <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>